accidentally had a shot of Reposado Casamigos and I don't like the way it's got me feeling. I'm a Blanco girl. I'm a white bitch. Okay. I don't do no brown liquor. I don't. I got enough brown on me. It's got an, I got a little room in here to let somebody else in from another race. Okay. And now my stomach hurt. Maybe it really wasn't Reposado, like it wasn't the truth. Because I asked them, I said, what, when they said Reposado, I said, what Reposado are you talking about? And, and then they said Casamigos. I said, okay, we can do that. I, we can do that. So somebody randomly gave me a shot. See, I'm at a restaurant having lunch, happy hour, $8 crab cakes, $6 empanadas. Man, I will. You was working. You know, right before the show. And I'm, 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 I'm coming to eat so I can head over to y'all because it's going to be a long night, you know? And then as I'm leaving, now that TV walks in with their cameras. I said, what the hell is this? Did y'all set me up? Is this, this sounds like a setup. And they're like, oh my God, Tasha can't touch I'm like, okay, how y'all doing? Can we take pictures? No. Can you please film a scene? Next thing you know, my boss got on the, ca on the phone and said, you gonna film a scene. I said, oh, okay. I got a boss now. So it happens when they, you put, they put you on paperwork. They own you, you know? So I ended up filming a scene that had to take a shot before the show. The only time I do tequila shots is when I'm doing live shows in Miami or Atlanta, maybe Vegas. And so I'm already a little lit. Y'all just going to have to excuse the litness, but I'm going to make sure I read these happy hour questions to the best of my ability and give you the right answers, okay? Now, this is happy hour if you're not... Uh, uh, if you're not uh, uh, up to par on what we do here on Mondays, no celebrity gossip, okay? Matter of fact, I'm going to start asking y'all, before you come on, when you name your name and your city to kind of train y'all, is your question relationship family-based? Maybe even career-based minus how to start a YouTube channel and everybody got a Gmail account. Matter of fact, we have a Facebook page for that. Y'all should be following Stash. That's where we answer each other's questions on any entrepreneurial situations that we have. Okay, so make sure you follow Stash on Facebook. That's where it goes down. Now, again, happy hour is all about us. Everybody getting off. They having a drink. I got a little announcement about happy hour. I can't tell you. Now, Jasmine probably ain't going to let me tell you right now. Jasmine, I can't tell you. They're going to be hating. They're going to be mad, Jasmine. Do you think they're going to be all right? Not, they won't be mad. But the whiners are going to be mad. You know what I'm saying? They was talking shit by happy hour. They don't know happy hour just made it. Because <laughs> we've been doing this a long time. We've been doing happy hour since, the sh since I started blogging in my room. In the bedroom with no sheets on the bed. Because I ain't want nobody coming up sitting their fuck ass on that bed. Not like that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Then I got to re- uh, uh, I got to rewash the sheets and I don't know where your ass is being. So if you're not spending the night, you're not sitting on them sheets. You're going to sit on a bare mattress and it makes people not want to spend the night until I give them the sheets and the towels folded up. And hit the wine glass if you're a day one of that, okay? But happy hour. It's very happy. It's very happy, okay? So listen, the link is in the chat. You guys can call in. I do encourage y'all to call in, okay? Relationship, family-based question. I'm going to ask y'all because I don't want Jasmine to just hang up in y'all face and then y'all emailing me talking about I embarrassed you. You know what I'm saying? I get that. And then, of course, the customer is always right. So I end up apologizing and issuing refunds. And the refunds is just I love you. I'm sorry. I, I ain't got no money. Okay. All right. But before we get started, yes, we got commercials on happy hour. That's what it's turned to. Okay. 
All right. You guys just hold backstage. Once you get backstage using that link in the chat, also email me your question on winewithtashk at gmail.com. Okay. But in the meantime, we got some sponsors that we need to brag about, which means boldly raise a glass too. Let's get it. Are the mistress to Shirley Strawberry's husband, Ernesto. We would talk every day for like five minutes, like every, like a like a breakfast call. I was a friend and a, just a friend. We just talked about everything, you know what I'm saying? Five minutes a day, whatever, whatever. I was just a friend. Girl, if I found out. I'm sure. As a wife. But you know what? If I was, if you was, if speaking I was to my husband, if I was day, fat and busted, would, would they care? Now, there's been calls that have been all over the internet, mm -hmm. okay, that have not only exposed Shirley, the husband, you and Steve Harvey and Marjorie Harvey. There's been a lot of these calls circulating. Now, surprising, let me read this article, okay? Because I, I just want to read a portion of this art, article. Now, Shirley Strawberry's estranged husband is incarcerated at the Atlanta Fulton County Jail on gun possession, theft, back up, fraud. Hold on. No, I just want to read the okay. article. That's, That's why you're right. here. Okay, That's go why ahead. You're here. <laughs> so, on um, gun possession, theft, fraud, child pornography charges, as per the Jasmine brand. Now, according to Sandra Rose, Williams is serving a 23-month prison sentence. Like. You have very intimate phone calls with this woman's husband, and you're claiming that y'all have never slept together, and you only had five-minute conversations of him waking up and saying good morning to you. That's Nesto calling you. That's Nesto calling you. Uh -huh. Okay, go ahead and answer. An inmate at the Cobb County Adult Detention Facility. To accept this call, press zero. Two. Ernesto, it's Tasha K. How you doing? That's what you're dealing with right now. And I put that shit on every fucking post that I ever had on Instagram. I understand it. I took all that shit, all everything I see, twist it to make fun. I don't fuck about that shit. They're going to see God come true today. And you speak. I don't give a damn if, if uh, Steve don't like you. I don't, they ain't got to do with me. You're here to deliver a motherfucking message. And I want to see you do your motherfucking job. Steve Harvey made her get up and address the things that she spoke with her husband about in terms of his marriage and what's going on with him and Marjorie and her not being at the house and she's never been to his house and, you know, a lot of stuff. And that then, was one phone call that they, when he was just asking her how her day was. And she was just, when a person's in jail, mm -hmm. especially. Mm. Hit the wine glass if you've seen that interview and you actually had a chance to watch the after show with some amazing ladies that's been breaking down this case since it started, okay? I mean, it's a lot of heavy wine there. You gotta watch both. You gotta watch it all. It's like three parts to it, okay? Make sure you got your subscriptions up. We have a lot of stuff coming up, okay? And we'll, we'll put that out a little later. And don't forget, we're going to TashaKLive.com after this show, okay? We got Ashanti and Nelly, Dion Sanders. Yeah, I had to bring this back up. Whew, Lord Jesus. He done left the old bitch. We'll talk about it, okay? All of that and more, all right? Don't forget, the link is in the chat. Call in, but we're going to start out with questions uh, that you guys wrote in, because I saw y'all right in before the show has started, okay? Remember, send relationship-based family career questions. I got you, okay? I cannot solve crimes yet. We're working on that, okay? We got to get some detectives on the team. All right, so the first question of the hour is, they want to be kept anonymous. So we do that. Remember why knows you guys have to answer in the chat. Hi, Tasha. How do you feel about having relationships with siblings? I ask this because even though we grew up in the same household, the relationship with my brother is very toxic. In the past, he has been very disrespectful towards me and talked to me any kind of way. But I was always the one he called when he needed anything and came running. Arguments used to be very hurtful and cutthroat and both in, on both ends because we're both stubborn and didn't back down. It came, a point, it came a point where I got tired of all the toxicity and cut all the communication off for years at a time. Family functions are high and by. Everybody wants us to get along, but I feel like my peace is more important with or without him. What do you think? Thanks. Okay. And so um, thank you so much for writing in. Thank you for trusting me. Okay, I appreciate that. Now, you said something that was key. You said, in the past, he has been very disrespectful towards me and talked to me any kind of way. And you said that the arguments be, used to be very hurtful, uh, hurtful and cutthroat on both ends, so which, which means both of y'all was talking shit as brother and sister. But at the end of the day, that, like, that's your brother. That's your brother. And this was the past. People do change, you know? Like, I have a lot of siblings, and we all 
fight. We just had a fight this past weekend at the Thanksgiving table. So much so the husbands had to get up, exit, and then come back and calm it down. It's just how it goes. Your family is the one that's going to hurt your feelings the most because they know you and you feel like whatever it is, they should just gracefully just have grace for you despite them being real because they are a reflection of you. And that's a lot of times why we don't like what they got to say. We came up in the same house. We got the same mama and daddy. How dare you tell me like you better than me and we the same. It sounds like you're holding grudges and it ain't hurting nobody but you because you at family uh, uh, events, high and by. He's not disrespecting you currently. And if y'all can say high and by, then y'all can say more to each other. And you can still keep your distance until you feel like it's safe enough for your feelings to go around him. Because that's all this is. He's just hurting your damn feelings. Okay? Now, it would be different if you called in and said he was touching on you and stuff like that. Because you do have people that really go through that. Their brothers touch on them, whether they beat them or inappropriately touch them, cousins too and stuff like that. But if this is just some brother and sister type because, you know, that's just what it is. And ain't no telling what, you know, what type of childhood y'all had coming up. You know, and it sounds like you got a little mouth on you too. I don't see nothing wrong with that at all. Like, you, y'all you need to bury this because at the end of the day, your mama them going to be gone and it's just going to be y'all. And you see who he come running to. Who can you run to? To share this empty space. All right, remember, guys, use the link to call in. I'm going to start answering calls here in a second. The link is in the chat, guys. Okay, Jasmine's putting the link in the chat. Go ahead and hit that link. I'm going to get to y'all backstage, but I'm going to read a few more questions before y'all come up here cussing and carrying on. And Tom, if you in the comments, I need you in the chat. I need you in the, I need you backstage, Tom. I need your energy. I love Tom. Y'all shout out for Tom. Okay, let's hope he's watching from the UK. I know it's late over there. All right, up next, let me see. Um, okay, this is a good one. Is it too long? Oh, my God, it's long. Oh, okay. Y'all tell me if y'all want me to read it or not. It's long. It's titled, Kids, Father, Ain't Shit. Please help before I catch a charge. Now, it's long now. You want me to read it? It's up to y'all. I'm an equal opportunity over here. I read pretty fast, don't I, Jasmine? I just get a little tongue-tied and dry mouth. You know what I'm saying? Remember, this is happy hour, okay? I'm going to read it. Let's go. Somebody said, no! I'm going to read fast. I'm going to read fast, okay? Kids, father ain't shit. Help before I catch a charge, Tasha. Hey, Miss Tasha K, first and foremost, I want to say uh, continue to do what you do. She want to remain anonymous due to the recent career change. I understand that. With that being said, I have a serious question I would like to ask. I have two kids with a man who now lives in another state. Mm. I have never been the type of woman to keep him from visiting his kids, taking them on vacations, having them for the holidays, etc. I have not been a, any aggressive mother who fights every girlfriend, wife, side chicken, etc. Well, I mean, y'all live in different states, so it's kind of hard to fight a side chick and stuff. As a matter of fact, I can only say that I literally get along with all that I literally get along with all of his other mother's kids with little to no effort. That's the problem right there. It's talking about uh, my kid's father ain't shit. How many mothers did was in the picture? Y'all sure do know how to pick them. The only problem I really have is the fact that my kid's father does not treat his kids equally. It's too many. Okay? It's too many. I'm going to answer this as I go. It's too many, child. It's hard to treat them equal, okay? Some may be cheaper than others. Some may be more expensive than others. Some may require no time at all, okay? You may have a kid that has autism, don't want to be fucked up with him. You know, it's just... You, you, it's the luck of the draw, all right? Now, let me explain. During the past, our little girl would return from the visits with a broken nail finger. Our daughter had to wear her finger in a sling and attend physical therapy for months. According to the story, his youngest son, who he holds on a pedestal, slammed my daughter's hand in a freezer door. Oh, hell no. When my son, now that's toxic. See, you know what I'm saying? That, that See, the other girl didn't say that in the question before, okay? When my son called to tell me, I told them to meet me at the hospital. When we got there, he tried to downplay the injury and immediately left as soon as I walked in the hospital with her. He did not even bother to stay. Okay, now he didn't even bother to stay. Our daughter's nail was damn near off her finger. They had to insert pins into her finger and she had to wear a sling and attend physical therapy for months. They all claimed it was an accident, so I let it. Next vacation they leave and upon the return, my daughter told me that the younger brother slapped her. Damn. 
he got anger problem. Okay. When I talked to their dad about it, the incident he brushed it off was okay. I immediately got pissed off and went off. Needless to say, that turned nasty. I tried to explain to him that it's not acceptable for a male child to hit a female child. Right. It is not acceptable that the father does not choose to discipline the child for their actions. Right. I did not grow up in an abusive household and I absolutely refuse for my daughter to believe it's okay for a man to put his hands on her exclamation part. Right. Needless to say, after we had this disagreement, he did what he usually does, which is run and tell like a little bitch. What are you doing? Okay. He will go and tell everyone some exaggerated story about me as a person painting me as a villain so that he can gain an army and come against me. Oh, this is a big army. Okay. <laughs> Rhinos. As usual, I stand alone, 10 toes down against all. I allow them to think whatever they want to think about me because at the end of the day, their opinions don't do shit for me. I can tell she educated. I ain't been tongue-tied that one time reading this, okay? She can write. She got an education. They don't pay any bills or put any food on my table. Hell, he barely does anything for my children. If I want to keep it all the way 100%, the main reason I never rejected their visits is, is because I enjoyed my me time. I heard that child send them kids to their daddy, okay? I mean, how many women would allow their kid's father to visit and come get them daily when they barely pay the mandated child support, never buys any school clothes, never keeps any of his promises to the kids. He only keeps them when he has a girlfriend so that he can front like he's the daddy of the year. That's what they are, okay? The kids get them. And she can buy the school clothes, a new girlfriend, okay? Never contributes to any school-rated fees. I mean, I can go on and on for the do's and don'ts of this man. $60 every three weeks for two kids. Baby, bye. Now, you knew his pockets was a little short when he had mothers before you, okay? Now, and you sound educated, so it should be easy. You know, I'm going to talk about this in a minute, educated women, okay? Y'all y'all got to take some responsibility in this. I almost got triggered there for a second. $60 every three weeks for two kids, baby, bye. He can't literally buy their time. Another break comes, and he wants to get the kids. Against my better judgment, I allowed them to go. Again, my daughter gets slapped. When she told me, I went off. He disregards this innocent, takes up for his son, gets loud and leaves. He disappears for months. This is where shit turns left real quick. Months later, he shows up at our home. I was in a house allowing him the privacy to visit the kids. He was outside yelling at my kids, telling them they should not be telling me anything that goes on. True. <laughs> that I'm evil and what and whatnot. No, yeah. To be honest, I can't even remember anything because I literally went dark. I mean, I let it go over 17 years of frustration and went the absolute F off. So y'all must be high school sweethearts or something. So yeah, okay, 17 years. The reason I went off is because after all those years, I have never talked down about his bum ass to his kids up, up until the point I had prided myself on being a parent that never displayed their dad in front of the kids. Disrespected, okay, downplayed their dad in front of the kids. Even when my mother, okay, brother, anyone used to talk crap about him in front of them, I used to always shut that down immediately. I firmly believe in keeping the kids in a safe place, okay, in a kid's place. I do not condone bashing the parent in front of the kids. I believe in the children having their own relationship that they build on their own. I would have never done that. And for him to do that in front of my kids was my on my property was true a true slap to my face that was the first time my kids had ever heard me talk negatively about their dad it was also the first time my kids saw me get violent with their dad no ma'am okay man i can't even lie i tried to break his face with his own car truck after i repeatedly so you just gonna give the very thing he's telling the kids about you you come out there and do it you come out there and do it mm -mm. Whew, okay, after I repeatedly asked him to leave and he refused to leave, I went and got my pistol and my black lab. Not the lab. The lab don't bite. Lab dogs don't bite. <laughs> he was going to either get a bullet in the ass or a dog's bite on the dick. Okay, either way, he was not leaving that yard in one piece. Not only that, he repeatedly keeps yelling how that's his son he's just a kid that's his son not one time did he acknowledge how his protections of his golden child are affecting the children he has that have come before this one 
I he thinks it's okay for a man to hit a woman because of how he was raised. I'm simply trying to get him to see that if you do not correct the aggression he has towards women, now it will get worse. And he will come across the right woman at the right time and she will beat the shit out of him and might even do something a lot worse, depending on the mentality. He does not believe that anything is wrong and refuses to discipline his son for literally abusing our daughter. He has no regard for female protection. We are the last on the totem pole and I refuse for my daughter to think that a man getting violent is her with her is equivalent to love. Time has passed and now he is asking for them to visit him in another state. I'm really against it. But I would hate to be the reason my children do not have a relationship with their father. What should I do? Child, you was about to release, you about to be the reason they didn't have a daddy going to get a gun and trying to run him over and get the lab to bite him in his ass. Yeah, this is too much. Educated women. Educated women. Y'all got checkbooks, right? Yeah, bank accounts, I'm sure. You, you got ledgers, planners. I know you, most women do, right? I got a planner. I got a ledger, pluses and minuses. When you as an educated woman or a woman with an education that is pursuing her future, you have to look at men not by what they have in their bank account, but how they manage their bank account. You have to look at the amount of kids, the amount of mothers that they have, and you have to say to yourself, do I want to be an added bill? And you have to look at it like this. The other mothers are going to come before your check. They've been here the longest. Okay. And as kids get older, which means if you get with a man that already has kids and the kids are older, the older they get, the more expensive they get. Babies is easy. They real easy. Especially if you got a breastfeeding mom, you know. But I just don't understand how are we leaving that out of the equation? Why is it that you guys can get great jobs, you're, you're 4.0s in college, but you can't apply that very education to picking a man, okay, that knows how to manage his household, meaning he doesn't go and make kids with this one, that one, this one, that one, which is going to directly impact your financial future and the level of relationship he's going to have with his kids. You're going to have to take some responsibility in that. So him living in another state, having other mothers, having kids, he don't see them all all the time. You may say that's the golden child or whatever, but bottom line, this man is spread too thin because his legs, y'all legs is spread too wide. And then you want to say you don't believe in violence towards women, but you're going to try to run him over with your car and get a gun just because he would not leave your property after he was talking shit about you to the kids? So? Those are just words. I think you're angry about something else and you're trying to rope the kids into it. You chose to lay down with this man, have kids with this man. You're actually being a great co-parent, I gotta get to you, but you can't holler about a man uh, uh, allowing a baby to abuse a little girl, that's her brother. You need to teach her to fight back. They siblings. That's my thing. They siblings. And when you siblings, anything goes. And you tell a baby girl, listen, this is where you're going to get your fight skills from. You practice on your brother. Now, don't kill him. But it's okay to practice because if some little girls run up on you or you know you happen to get in a relationship with a man that want to put his hands on you, you use him as the teaching, the teacher. So you learn from your little brother. So when he slap you, you slap his ass the fuck back. These are kids. Do you understand what I'm saying? But you can't retaliate and try to run him over. Try to take the baby daddy out and then call him to come get some kids, come get the kids when you need me time. It's a lot going on here. And like I said, y'all educated women, y'all y'all got to get better about this. Y'all y'all have got to get better. Okay? <laughs> Moving on. All right, y'all. Uh, hit the link in the chat. If you want your question read, please feel free to email us at unwamatashk at gmail.com and we'll let you know if your question is made. The channel, okay? Let me know if you want to be anonymous or not, all right? Let's go on up. Betty Boop? Yes. How you doing? I'm doing good, Tasha. How are you? 
Fantastic. Do you have a question about your family, friends, relationship? I do. I, I follow instructions very well. I okay, do. Cool. I, I got to ask everybody. You know what I'm that's saying? That's okay. So, that's okay. It's okay. Where you calling from? Atlanta? Uh, yes, ma'am. I'm calling for Fayetteville in Atlanta. She do take instructions well. She had her name and the city right there. So we can just get into <laughs> the, the, the thing. Y'all should start doing that. Yeah. Okay, well, you hit the link in the chat, okay? All right. So what's your question, baby? Okay. Well, my question is, okay, so I got to make it short. All right. Simple. Okay, so my husband is 19 years younger than me. Don't look at me like that, Tasha. Don't look at me sideways. Put your glasses back on. Put your glasses. Okay, so a while back, he told his mother something, right? That's right. Gonna get you some. Now, you already said you had some liquor earlier now. We finna like, mix. Let's oh, go. Lord. Okay, so he told his mom something a couple of months ago, right? Mm -hmm. So his mom in turn told his sister. His sister told me. Mm -hmm. It hurted my feelings really bad. So I had to go to him. She told me not to say nothing. But now I was smart about it. I mentioned a part of what he said. I didn't say who said it. I just threw it in a conversation. But because he knew who he told it to, he immediately stopped talking to both of them. What did his, he say? What did he say? Yes. See, I knew you was going to ask that. I got okay. to. Okay. This is this happy is hour now. Said. Come on, get it out. Okay, this is what he said. Okay. So, a while back, I had I had my own business. I had to close my business. Okay. Long story short, um, I, I wasn't able to foot my part of the bills like I normally would. So he was having to pay out more than he normally would, right? Mm -hmm. So in return, he told his mom, so it was time for me to get a new set of rings. So I told his mom, because she get all the good deals on rings and stuff. So I told her, well, you need to put your son up on game because it's time for me a new set of rings. So when she, she decided to offer him her set that she had from a previous marriage, he told her, well, she don't deserve it until she can start catching up on her bills. Now, Tasha, now, I'm 19 years older than him. I felt the way. That's right. For a lot of reasons, I felt uh -huh. the way. Yeah. For, for, I, I can't even tell you how many. So, I, you know, we, I told him, I called him because he was out of town. I told him, uh, I want a divorce. Yeah. Uh, because I told you for a lot of reasons, because I'm an older woman, for a lot of reasons, that pissed me off. Now, Betty, are you his mother or his wife? I am his wife, but the reason why it pissed me off, and I am in my... I, I'm in my lane as a wife. Number one, let's just keep it all the way real. We married, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. When we first got together, both of us was po. We was taking two pennies trying to make a nickel, right? Okay. So, yeah, we did go and have phone bills. But things have changed. We've been together for 10 years. Things have changed. So, if at some point that I can't do my part, you as my husband, with no problem, you should pick up three, four, five, whatever, how many jobs you need to pick up True. to hold my slack for me. True. So don't say that I don't deserve it because at the end of the day, I'm your wife. I'm faithful. It ain't nothing that, that, that you need. And I always have an open dialogue about, you know, if it's anything we need to talk about, am I lacking on anything? Because I want, because number one, like I told you, he's 19 years younger. So, you know, I got Do you say up. that to him a lot that he's younger than you? No, I never. I never, I, for real, Tasha, because his first, his first uh, girl did that, and that was the one thing that he didn't like. I, I never. So he likes about, older women. Yeah, but I never bring up the age thing with us. Never. Now, what is your age? My age is fifty three. And he's nineteen years younger, so he's damn like thirty two, something like that. Betty, Tasha, Betty. Oh, Tasha, let me tell you, I was not a cougar. Now, we're from not... the South now. Now, hold up. Now, wait a minute. Okay, Daddy. But I'm Daddy. 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 Listen, listen, Tasha, for real, on everything, anybody that know me, know my motto used to always be, it ain't nothing a young boy can do for me but show me where his daddy at. That was always my motto. But 
this is something that just it like I I'd be like that song Deborah Cox. How did you get here? Because I I I wasn't seeking that. He sought you. And for and for about three months, I was having so much fun. I didn't even ask his age. But you knew it. I knew he was younger than me. And y'all been together ten years. Yep. So you met him when he was twenty-two. And then let me tell you something else, Sasha. Betty. Let me tell you something else. Betty. I ain't even looked at the chat. It's six hundred and ninety-two. Tosh, Betty, Tosh, it's three thousand people in here, baby. Tasha, let me tell you what else. What's up? I got two kids older than him. But they, respect, but they respect them though. We we all we all cool. Do you expect your children to pay bills? Do I expect them to? Yeah. If they live with me? Yeah. Yeah. I expect But them if they to ain't pay got bills. it, they're your kids, so they get some kind of grace, right? Um, not necessarily because I didn't raise my boys up like that. Okay. I mean, if if I mean you grown, you you have to pay bills regardless if it with me. Mm -hmm. I don't care. And I mean, you know, when they was younger, if they grades my right, they lived in the basement. I would cut the breaker to the basement lights off. Because, Damn, really? be, yeah, because everybody got a job in this house. And if I if I go to work and fuck up on my job, I ain't gonna have no job. The lights gonna be off anyway. So if y'all go to school and fuck up, y'all ain't gonna have. No, I mean, it's rules for this. Betty, you possible. seem like the type. You know how there is black. And it's then there's white. black. Mm -hmm. There's no gray area with you. It's either all or nothing. Well, that's called what what uh what King Son said, standing on business. That's a child. Okay, See, but I'm standing, is, I, I'm standing Betty? on business as the grown woman, though. Okay, Betty. When you got with this 22-year-old, what did you have to teach him? Um, I really didn't have to teach him a lot. Yeah. And I think that that was one of the things. No, seriously, Tasha, because I want to say that, you know, in all honesty, like. He, so, he, Betty, you didn't have to teach him how to fuck you? Uh-uh. No. Nah. He already knew. Well, sort of, kind of. He hadn't had a lot of experience before me. He hadn't been married before me, but he hadn't had a lot of women before me. But I mean, at, when I at the age that I was at, I mean, just keeping it real. At the age that I was at, my body was going through some stuff. I went. It wasn't even built on sex. Our relationship wasn't built on sex. But you I had no it, Betty, I don't a twenty-two-year-old. Huh? Betty, a twenty-two-year-old. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to show him by example nothing. Now I am. Now it's coming. Now, now I am. Okay. So I, you, I, you think, realize... I think I might have overlooked some shit back then. <laughs> but think? now it's bothering me. I mean, hey, I'm standing on business. I'm just keeping it 100 for real, though. You know, because he... Man, I'm going to need you to stop quoting that child now for he be in your bed. Well, a lot of people quote it now. <laughs> Listen, Betty. 22 and 32. He really didn't. He really didn't even become grown until twenty seven, twenty eight. Tasha, I'm living it. I know it. Okay, so I know. you got just like he. You went through menopause yet, Betty? Yes, that's why I was just trying to tell you. Mm -hmm. And he went, and he, and he stuck beside you. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to stick beside him now. I am. No, nah, but you talking about you want a divorce now, but Betty? Listen, oh, nah. But 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 listen, so since then I told him we was gonna go to counseling because like I want him to understand, like I didn't even get mad about it. I was hurt about it. And so me explaining it to him, he was jumping on the defense. Well, it was a gold ring, and I know you ain't like gold anyway. No, that ain't why you said that to your mama. And I wanna get to the root of the reason as to why he felt that because he's been holding me down and we've been holding each other down ever since we've been together. I mean, we done been through some stuff together. You know what I'm saying? So and when I say been through some stuff, not cheating and stuff like financially hardship. And so mm -hmm. we made it through, we made it through a lot of stuff. And for him to say that, like that cut. You know what I'm saying? I it, mean, was he playing when he said no, like you have people no, can be no, sarcastic? No, 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 no. And he's not that type of person. And let me tell you what else. So when I was going through this problem, like when after I closed the business down and I was like, you know, my savings was getting low and stuff, I was telling one of my best friends, I hate to even go to him and talk to him because not that he used to make me feel away, but the way he used to talk about 
like his friends and other people about how they get behind in their bills and stuff. So he's one of them type people. I didn't even want to go to him because I it was in my gut that he would feel a way. Betty, I think um baby, you're gonna have to go down and, and turn the, the breaker off. On his ass. Mm hmm But don't divorce him. Well, but but my question was is that I feel like it's in, kind of immature. And I also feel bad, but I think it's kind of immature for him not to talk to his mom and his sister again. Because he said it. Run that by me one more time. I want to make sure I heard you correctly, Betty. Okay. I feel like it's I feel like it's immature on his part. But I also feel wait, let me finish. But I also feel guilty because they told it to me. And I told it to him, so now they're not speaking because they all had a they all had a really good relationship. You know what I'm okay. saying? Okay. So, but I don't think you need a therapist for this. As no, a I need a therapist to find out why the hell he said that to his mom. Because Betty, I mean, he been with you ten years. I mean, he can pretty much say what he want within reason without calling you out your name and stuff. He should be able to. But he should have said it to me. I get that, and that's that's the thing that y'all really need to discuss. And I think you, as the older person, have you have what it takes to bring the whole family back together because you don't want him not talking to his mom and sister. Where's his damn daddy? His dad is around, but he um he's married. You know he do his own thing, but he not he's in his life, but he not really talk to his dad about about about, about this. You know what just I'm saying? Just like just like he was there for you during menopause. You're going to have to be there for him during his immaturity stage. You're going to have to let life life. That's what happens when you marry down like that. Okay. So, let, okay. So, I'm reading some of the comments. And so let me just comment on two things. Go Number ahead. two, with me and him, I've never been a paymaster. I've never took care of him. I've never took care of him. And number two, it never, our relationship never arrived, revolved around sex. Now, when I met him, I'm not going to say where my mind was mentally to make me be attracted to him at that time. But it was never, I never took care of him. He always held us down, really. Um, but you said earlier that y'all went half and half on things. Yeah, for a long time. But like, even like when we. And that's where you made the mistake. Yeah, I know. I know, so like you I now have to, if you're teaching a it. child mm -hmm. that you go have, Betty, he was a child when you met him, 22 mm -hmm. is a child. Now you taught him as a child that you go half, and now you as the parent, because that's your motherfucking son, okay? Now we're not holding up the end. He's he's looking at the consequences that you probably gave him, you know, for not holding up his end. So He's only mimicking what the fuck he was taught. There's consequences. So you don't get no rain until you pay your half. That's how kids act. You're going to have to let him grow up. But divorcing him, I mean, does he want a divorce? Oh, no. Mm -mm. Okay, don't do that then. Because you, you, what you don't want, you don't want to be around here in your 60s mad over something you're going to get over and you're going to forget about at the next cookout. Okay. Everybody okay. know he younger than you. Ain't nobody studying that shit. And I'm sure that family love you just like you love them. And just tell him going forward, listen, just keep my name and our business out of other people's mouths. That's it. If you got a problem, just come to me. But he was only exercising what he was taught. You ain't holding your end up. So he feel, where's your end? He's not considering your age, things that you got going on, life, life, you losing your business and stuff like that. He's a child still. He's 32. He's just now stepping into his manhood, whether you want to see that or not. And he is going to make some mistakes. And just like you went through some shit, you got to go through some shit with him too. Yeah, now, I you want to add a counselor into it, but I don't think a counselor should be shaping the way he develops as a man. Yeah, I understand. In this world, that. I understand what you're saying about that. You understand? Yeah, I got you. Okay, now go on and give him some pussy tonight, y'all. I was thinking about that. All right, Tasha. Thank you so much. <laughs>
and, and I love everything that you're doing. I really do. I, I love it, man. Go ahead, hop on that. Hop on that, okay? <laughs> all right, and, and all right. Thank you, you have a conversation with him is after he gives mass. You know how that works. Yeah, I yeah, while we laying down. down. While we laying before. down and both of us out of breath. I get it. I get it. <laughs> I'm telling you, I can ask Shaq something before, but after say everything is yes. The question before is always so no. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Tasha. Anytime. All right, and keep doing what you're doing. All right, baby. All right. Come bye. on up here. Jaded. Who is the Jaded Experience? Hey. You was just on camera. With her. Hey. Turn your mic on. Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. I can't hear you at all. <laughs> really? I hear your baby, too. Tasha. Yes. I can't hear you. you can't I can hear see you, but I can't hear you. Turn your mic on. Or turn your volume up on the side. My phone is all the way up. Oh, my God. I've been waiting well, go for out, an hour. Go out. Come back in. No, go back out. Come back in. How do I do that? I cannot hear you. Delete it. Come back in. Calm the baby down, and I'm going to let you I'm in. I'm about to come okay? back in. Oh, my God. I okay. promise you. I got Thank you. I promise you. I got a question. I got a question. I got Thank you. you. I ain't going to do you I like this. I still can't hear you, but I can read oh, your lips. Okay, but come back. Come back. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the baby going. God said no. B. Oh, hey. Hey, where you calling from? Tampa, Florida. Okay. Do you have a question about a relationship with family? Um. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's about a re necessarily about a relationship or uh, some like what what you think I should do. Okay. Go ahead, baby. Hit me with your question. Let's go. Okay. So, um, I'm 32. Okay. I have four kids. Um. I was young. I was young, you know. You're back always in the lying, talking about I was young. You was fast as fuck. You yeah, know and you ain't let me get it out. You ain't let me get it out. 18, 19 years old, I was hunching. I was throwing it. I was hunching. Okay. I ain't even going to cap. I was hunching. All right, go ahead, baby. Go so, ahead. So uh, I got four, in the midst of me doing all that, I got four kids. I got a set of twins, and I got a little girl and a little boy. My oh. youngest two kids, their fathers are full-time. They take them. They get them everything. Okay. The issue is my older two kids. Okay. So round I was, you know, dibbing and dabbing. I texted two niggas first that I thought was my baby daddy. They wasn't it. So I got another dude, but I haven't texted him. I haven't talked it to him. Nothing, none, none of that. Mm -hmm. But um the, the question is, what should I do? Because I reached out to him. Um, he won't you know, respond. I reached out to the mother. The mother just basically like disregarded everything that I said because my kid, my oldest, the twins are 13 now. Um, I understand that the the person that I want to test, he has a family, he has a wife, he has all of that stuff going on. At the time, it wasn't like that. It was a one-time thing and I just happened to get pregnant, you know? So, um, I don't want to mess up no homes or cause any problems any friction none of that so i'm just i'm just stuck on what i should do i wrote the mom i wrote the father nobody has hit me back um I'm, and i'm just lost i'm lost on um, like girl you didn't pop I, up I with take accountability i take well listen you didn't that pop up with a baby you popped up with a couple yeah it was That's why. I, I that bad like thing about my, that was me it was me like i was you know being reckless with my body and stuff so and the result of that, I, you know, got kids and stuff. I take full accountability for my part and what I did. But you how know, sure so. are you that he's a father? Um, It was three different dudes. Three different dudes that I was messing with at the same time. So the first two dudes I tested and this last dude, I'm not 100% sure. I'm not even going to say I'm 100% sure. I just want him to take the test. Just take the test and we can get it out of the way. Like... Well, you, you, can do, you can do a court order test. You know how Florida do. You go down there, ask for some child support, and they'll make him show up to take the test. And see, this is, and this is the thing. The second dude that I tried to, he took, he ran from the test, everything. Ran, completely said, F all of that. And it took literally up until my children were about 11 years old for him to finally, you know, take the test. And it came back that he wasn't the father. So a lot of, the court defaulted him the father of my kids because they tried three times to get him to do a DNA test and he didn't do it. So they defaulted him. You get what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. So now we in the process, I'm trying to get him like situated. I'm trying to help him get off 
of child support and all of that stuff because I, I'm a woman. <laughs> I'm not going to keep taking man for money from this man knowing that he's not the father of my kids. You know you got to get it back, right? Huh? Uh, 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 huh? Yeah. Uh-huh. But the reason he's paying child support is because he didn't take the test. Uh, you got to get it back. Oh. If you un do him as a father you got to refund that so what do you what do you what you think i should do keep it like that and let that man keep paying it <laughs> you're gonna I, I need just... okay 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 now i'm not a lawyer however this right. is what i would do and you do need to seek a lawyer for this but this is what okay. i would do i would make a deal with him i would say i will take you off child support and undefault you as the father and basically clear the back pay if you do not require me to pay it back. Okay, cool. Slim, what you think? What you think, Slim? What Slim said? Okay, so Slim said if he was in that situation, he'd be cool with that. Okay, cool. Yeah, so that's okay. how you're going to do that. But you got to get it in writing. So if he does try to say or the court tries to enforce something, him saying he doesn't want it, you got that in writing. So make sure you get that notarized. Right. Okay. Yeah, but the thing I'm confused about is the the la the last dude. Like I'm just like, what should okay. I do? Okay. Now you just gonna have to do the same process that you did with the second dude. Oh Let my the Jesus! That was ass down. man. That was drawn out. But it's fine. But it's for your kids, right? Yeah. You just better hope yeah. you're right this time. Yeah, I hope I'm right too. Shit, I was doing. I, listen, listen. We all have our moments where we just be like, you know, all over the place. I was all over the place. All right, you know, when I first I got a little piece, when I first got a piece of the little thing, and it it was jumping from there. You get what I'm saying? So I don't know. Fast. I'm it's, just being open and honest. Let's see. Fast. Well, at least you're gonna be a young grandma, huh? <laughs> what you say? You're gonna be a young grandma. You got your kids out of the way. Shit. Oh you know? no, my kid. Uh. -uh. Uh uh, my kids don't know. I'm gonna be a grandmother, but I don't think I'm gonna be a young grandmother. You will, because your kids gonna be grown so. before you turn like forty and fifty. Well, I'll be kicking it with my kids then. Shit, <laughs> I'll be kicking. That's it with what you gotta do. So go ahead, and get a written contract from him. Then go get the lawyer and go get everything undone. And okay. get that child support because really I don't feel like him. that's fair. I don't feel like it's fair for me to keep doing that. Or that you to do that because most my mama would never. <laughs> <laughs> Linda would have been like the hell with it. You shouldn't have put no dick in me. I thought it was. I'm sorry. Oh my god! <laughs> I don't feel like that's fair. I feel like I that's it's in my duty to you know clear that because you know even though yeah. he took as long as he did, like mm -hmm. you know, it, I just and just feel do like this with the guy, the other guy. Just say hey. I don't want to have to get the courts to come chase you because they will default you as the father and start garnishing your checks. Let's Again, just get it. They will do that. They with will do person. that. They will do that. You know, Florida don't play about that shit. They want that money. Right. Okay. Right. So you're going to go down there and you're going to do that. Say here, they can either default you and garnish you and your wife's checks, or you just come take the test and then we, we work out a payment plan. That's it. And you don't right. even need back pay since you already got somebody to back pay that, okay? You just focus <laughs> on what's now. Okay. All Can right. you be in the kid's life? Okay, yeah, I'm going to give y'all an update, you know. And don't be no house. don't be no mean baby mama to that wife now. Oh, no, no, I, I'm not even that type. I'm not I'm not even like that. I don't, I have no issues with You go none through of her. That. You go through her when you want to deal with him. So she feels empowered about the situation. Right, right. You're absolutely right. right. And okay. I also, I'm transparent with my kids. I tell my kids everything, my oldest two. I tell them everything that's going on. I let them know what I'm doing so that when everything does go down, like they're, they don't have no negative spirit against anybody. Like, you know how some kids you, can Yeah, that's like, good for you doing that, for real. Because my daddy just showed up when I was 12, and he was like, I'm your daddy. He talked just like, he got a raspy voice like me. I'm your daddy. I was like, who? <laughs> Man, yeah, I'm so about to go upstairs. I was like, I'm about to go upstairs, like, for real. Like, he was like, well. Yeah, I keep them in the loop with everything because I don't want them to be 
upset with anybody because it's not their fault. It's mine. Mm. So I just, you know, try to keep them open. I let them know everything. Like, literally Yeah, that's good. That and keep it in. like that. Keep it like that. I love that about you. So, and tell these yeah, girls, just, don't get pregnant during their whole phase. Oh, man. I, yeah. And I yes. got two daughters. I got two daughters. So it's kind of like, I, I be on them. The like, boys too. Them. You got to tell them too because they're going to think it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All Thank right. you, Tasha. I appreciate love it. Love me. Love you. Love you too. All right. Bye bye. Where'd she go? She came back. Okay. Let her in. Hey, baby. Hey. How are, how are you? you? <laughs> Good. You guys see the baby not crying? I don't know. He's he's on my hip. He's attached to me, so he couldn't oh, cry down. How there. old is but he? I mean, he's three. Yeah, we in that I stage. Get, but I, I do get, have a question. Yeah. Yes, no, wait, wait. You know he oh, don't oh, understand oh, oh, oh. that. You might as well let him in the camera, girl. No. Okay, Tasha. What's here, up? I have a question. It might sound rude, but I do not like my mom. Oh. Um, we have a very now, and I'm the only child. She says I'm just spoiled. That's why I don't like her. But it's like really getting to me. Like I'm in my thirties now, and she had me old. Like she's almost like sixty five or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's just like every year it get worse and worse and worse. Why and worse. you don't like her? Because I feel like she don't listen. I feel like she dismisses me. She always like fat shaming me ever since I was little. Like I'm very insecure because of her. And I try to tell oh, her. You sound like Tantu right now. Huh? You sound like Tantu right now. Your daughter. Yeah. <laughs> she, I mean, but it's the truth. Like, and I look at her like she crazy. And that's my mom. She like, girl, I, was, I, I wasn't on crack. You just spoiled. Like, right. That's, I like, put your mama on oh that way. What do you want her to do? Oh my God. Only in the United States do y'all have these issues. Like, you go anywhere else, your parents can slap the shit out you till you're 40. You can't do nothing about it. You just say, Yes, mama. And we used to fight when I was younger. See, I turned to it never. I would drop her. I almost dropped it the other day in the hallway. I'm with you, Nene. Nee, nee. Hey, baby. Hi. 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 Okay. But anyway, I'm on the phone, okay? Okay. Okay. Thank so you. So, you're, I'm going to be honest with you. Do you have a, you have a daughter? Yep. How old, um, mm -hmm. How old is she? Eight. How old is she? Eight. Okay, so she about to hit puberty. Yeah, it's already started for real, for real. Okay, so this is the stage. Hey. I, I would, I would just hold back on not liking your mama for hey. now. Just, just hold it. But she already seen it because I had. I had okay, to my but she understands that because she know God about to whoop hey. your ass. Right, right, right. Okay. And then the fact that you got like, I, just like I had Tantu and Lamine and I got a teenager and a toddler and then my mama was sucking shit too. Boy, when my daughter hit like 15, I called my mama and I said, I'm sorry. I think my pride is too high. Like we have hit, we have very I have, hit. I have ego problems. Me too. I got, but... million, I got a $4 million lawsuit because of an ego. Do you understand? <laughs> I was always the problem child in my family. My mom was told by the judge, listen, if you don't get her in line, we're going to put you in jail. Because I was always that, 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 that fighting, you know, but I, I, my mama, she listened. I even think about fighting her. She was the type, she would drop me because she was in the military. She was a drill oh, sergeant. No, no, yeah. No. yeah. My mama was, I wouldn't. <laughs> That's try. where I kind of learned how to I fight from, that. you know, or defend myself. But I, I no. ain't never hit my mama, no. but I can hold her down, you yeah. know? So people don't get that. I'm like, my mama was a drill sergeant. She could drop, do push-ups with Stop. one arm when Stop. she was raising Stop. me. So. What I'm saying is, give your mama some grace. I don't think that it's a big deal. You're saying she fat shames you. She does this. The fat shaming is just her way of saying, I don't want you having no health problems. Oh, it's okay. I get, I get what you did. I get what you did. The fat shaming is her way of saying she don't want you having no health problems. Everything is overindulging now. So that's just her, her way of just telling you, baby, please don't overeat. I don't want you growing up with these problems. But, but it comes off probably condescending and disrespectful, and it makes you have low self esteem. But really, she's trying to make you take accountability. Right. And I'm the tallest in my family. I'm like 5'10, five, 5'9. Five, so it's Which like I'm never fat, but it's just like I'm bigger than all my cousins. They're like all 5'2. So I, I stand out. 5'10 so like, is kind of tall. And 5'10, you will notice the, the taller people are, the harder it is for their hearts to pump. So it's just kind of her way, yeah, of saying, baby, please don't eat too much. Watch your weight. 
exercise. She old school. We don't yeah. say, oh, but you need to watch those pies. We say, bitch, you're getting fat. Your ass is yes. Big. But you if I tell her, like, hey, that's not the way I communicate, why can't she figure out a way to say something else? You sound like time to. <laughs> like, that's not my language. Well, like, wait you till your kids. That just very just wait till your kids start communicating. You and your mom are going to be best friends because you're going to be calling her and saying, mm -hmm. mama, oh, it's going to get thick for you, baby. It's going to get thick. The hormones is different in the food. Your child is not going to be your child anymore. You're going to be like, who, excuse my French, you're going to be like, who is this? And then my daughter, she's half African and she already got a little booty see, on her. See like what I'm she talking just... about? See? Yeah, mine too. Yeah, she get told every day, all day she look exotic and yeah. she pretty and she African and she really gets thick with me. Like, I'm telling you, I have to look at Tonto and I'm like, girl, I will drop you in front of all these white people and so go to started, jail. So getting like that with your daughter yes. like around what age, you think? Uh, 13. So I should just chill out? Like, we don't need to chill out. Good. Chill out, because you and your mom are going to have a coming of the minds. You think so? Okay. Yes. And then it's going to put you in a different space. Mom. And you're going to be like, you know what, mom? Wasn't that bad. And you're going to see yourself and your daughter and how your daughter responds to you. And then you're going to see how your mom feels. I would just hold off on that. And you got a three-year-old that's bothering the hell out of you. So you're real, you're real <laughs> anxious anyway. Yes. Anything will pop you off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And the last thing you need is somebody telling you how you should be, how you need to look, what your kids is like, and your mama just, she just doing what mamas do. I promise you. I've been there. I've been there. Me and Lynette used to be like... I didn't know this was a thing. I'm just, because everybody like, oh, your mama's so cool. It's like, we always... And everybody said that about my mama. I'm like, what cool I'm like, word? Right. I'm like, she, is, I hate <laughs> she evil. And then I was like, she's so nice now. I'm like, mom. You <laughs> know, like, I, can't wait I until promise it's there. you. Okay. Yeah, you're going to be good. You're going to be good. So okay. just, just chill out. And I'm telling you, you and your mama going to come together. Okay, well, thank you, Tasha. I appreciate okay. it. Okay. All no right. problem. Bye, Thank baby. You. All right. Remember, y'all hold backstage, okay? This is happy hour. Real quick, we're going to take a commercial. Hold that thought. After the break, we got a lot of people waiting backstage. We're going to answer your question, and we got some questions that we're going to read. And if you want your question read on wamatashk at gmail.com, or if you want to call in, hit the link, okay? I hope you guys are enjoying happy hour. We got some sponsors that we need to break about, which means boldly raise a glass, too. Let's go! This is NBA star Joe X Smith. Joe Smith, yes. okay. We're going to call you Kiss. Is that your artist name? Yes. Do you use that on OnlyFans as well, too? Okay. I was a porn star from the years of 1989 to 2006. AIDS was rampant around this time everyone thinks that because you're a porn star you're super promiscuous and that you know mm -hmm. you have a high body count <laughs> uh, i ain't never seen nobody pump their husband the way you did i have an only fans page and he's mad because he's just now finding out about it of course i'm mad if you just finding out about it i'm not doing it with anybody but myself so why should i have to tell you my choice my body my body my fucking choice how, how did you and joe meet we met in los angeles um in 2012 at a bet award party it, so he was playing basketball at the time. no he wasn't oh he was it was no, before this is after basketball after basketball yes. i don't know why i thought you met him everyone that's the that's a preconception right there or a misconception that i was with him while he was playing ball i'm not i was not that wife so he's retired yes okay was he getting retirement checks when you met him um no there it doesn't work like that Bye. And then Monique Slaughter, she stole the hundred thousand dollars from him. She was dating him prior to me. Love and hip hop, Monique. Yes. Um, Monique's Monique's. Monique's Monique. Got a baby by Lil Fizz. Monique's the thief. How the hell did that go down? And then I even have her on a recording saying, "I can tell you how I got the money." So you're in a relationship with kids, and then you fuck play. I was whack as fuck. Dick is trash. Got a little ass dick. Like I, like, I fucked up good dick for whack dick. Whose life did you ruin? And nobody else's. <laughs> um, I was fucking with Pac for a little bit. Tupac? Yes. But not like his girl. Just, you know, we boned every now and then. I met you him. You was fucking with Pac. Now Jada is finna lose her shit. Yeah. Tupac's widow is finna lose her fucking shit. Was you okay? The dick first was of all, good. I'm trying to figure <laughs> the out dick why. Dick was she, good, and he he Tupac liked to do it in the Yes. <laughs> Jada swears that Tupac was with her. No. And I'm like, no, he had a he fiance. He was with Keisha, and I was the other Keisha. And he probably was smashing around that time, but Jada was also fucking MC Light around that time. Let's.
talk about it at the catch, honey. Whoa! Gave them there together. Whoa! So, yes, ma'am. Whoa, what the hell just happened? You're saying that you know Jada Pinkett Smith at the catch. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it on TashaKLive.com. If you ain't seen that interview, it's thick in the chat. It's thick. They love Kiss. I didn't even know it had almost 2 million views just on Instagram alone. I ain't even checked Facebook. and uh, I think uh, TikTok got about a million, too, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, we're getting some wine, y'all. Y'all have no idea what we got coming up. A lot. A lot, okay? All right, remember, this is happy hour. This is all about us, okay? You guys get to write in or call in. All right. I can't wait to announce to you what's going on with happy hour. We made it. But I can't tell you. Just hold that thought. It's coming. The whiners are going to be whining. All right. So listen, uh, if you want to write in, please write in. Use the at gmail.com. They come right to my email right in front of me. If you want to call in, hit the link. Hold backstage. I see you guys holding backstage. I'm going to get right to you. Okay. Thank you so much for your patience. All right. All right. So I want to be anonymous. Done. Hey, Tasha, I've been with my husband since high school. We got married about three years ago, and I have four kids together. I've been catching him with other women, and I confront the situation, and he stopped for a minute, then he do it again. Right now, we are separated, and I'm thinking about a divorce. What should I do? Well, baby, I can't tell you whether to divorce your husband or not, okay? But what I can tell you is that it seems like he missed a, a great deal of his life, and he, every man has to go through a whole stage, even women, you know? But y'all went right into having kids, and it's kind of like he finding solace with other women, but that's not the answer to what he's looking for. Because at the end of the day, he's going to Martell hold it. He going to spin the block and come right back. You know, Martell went everywhere only to come begging back the melody, and now he out here looking lonely and desolate. So here you got two options. Either you're going to make a decision that's best for you and your children that you share. Or you're going to allow your husband this space separated to go find himself. But they always find that it's cheaper to keep her. Okay? Simple. All right. Next question is from Island Girl. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> All right. Hi, Tasha. I would like to remain anonymous. Okay, Island Girl. I met a guy on Tinder. I see why you want to be anonymous. Uh huh. Mm. I met a guy on Tinder. He's originally from Trinidad, where I currently live, but he lives in the States. He has five kids by two baby mamas, and he claims he's not seeing any of them. He came in the country for his family reunion and made it seemed to me that he was overly excited to meet me and spend time with me but a lot of stuff happened over the weekend that really made that situation difficult hmm how difficult he lost his luggage and he wanted to get it back because he brought stuff in to sell. Then we had an argument because while I was wasted, waiting on him he went to a club and was basically dribbling over dribbling over another woman and posting her up on his social media to which we barely communicated the day after he left when he went back to america he basically slept with his his ex baby mom because he thought things was over between us and then came clean about it the next day but want me to have a baby with him should i leave him alone and move on no, you should stay. You know why you should stay? You should stay because you like being lied to. You should stay because you're intentionally being dumb. You should stay because you like meeting men that you know absolutely nothing about and believing everything that they say because you just want to believe in love. You should stay because if you do have a baby, being that he has five kids, he has to split the kids and what he makes six ways and being that he's bringing products in to sell into the United States of America or Trinidad or wherever he's going. This is how he's making his money. So which means you're not going to be able to get him for child support at all, because that's a good thing in America, especially if he lives in America or wherever he lives, because I'm sure he's got multiple families. Mm -hmm. <sighs> you should stay because you like having babies by men who lie to you. 
You should stay because, you know, um, I don't think you know what love is and nor do I think you care. The fact that something happened all weekend and went from his luggage, okay, and he brought stuff in to sell and we had an argument while he was waiting on him. Then he went to the club after he got his luggage. He didn't come to you, stopped posting the woman up on social media, and then he went back to America, didn't even see you. And he basically slept with his ex-baby mama because things was over between him and I. He came clean about it, but now he want to have a baby. You should stay. I think you belong here. Third baby mama. Can't find him. Don't know who he's sleeping with. What club he's at. You don't know shit about him. And let me tell you this. <clears throat> I was told this at 17. By my late great aunt, Diane McNeil. I asked her one day. It was right after I had got into a fight with Typhus. I said, how do you know when a man really loves you? And she said, Tasha, she sat there. And she was drinking a Diet Coke and taking a goodie pot at the same time and eating Burger King and her sugar was high. And she had both her legs amputated and they were still bleeding. Mm -hmm. Baby, when they want to spend all their time with you. I said, really? She said, that's it. When they want to spend all their time with you. I said, well, what about a job? When they come home, they... When they get out of work, they come home. They want to take you with them everywhere. They want to show you off. They want to post you on their social media. We didn't have social media, but they want to tell everybody about you. They don't go to the club alone. And it was simple. That's why I got Shaq Nine. Can't get rid of his ass. Can't. Okay? But you should stay. All right. Up next. I don't know how to say your name. Hey, girl. Hey, baby. What's your name? Anicia Ray. You can Anicia. call me Ray, though. Okay, Anicia Ray. Where you calling from? South Carolina. Shout out to South Carolina. <laughs> All right. And do you have a question, family-related, relationship-related, something that matters? Happy hour. I have a career question, if that's okay. okay. It ain't got nothing to do with YouTube, do it? No. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> You're so funny. First, mm -hmm. I love you, Sasha K. I really do. I'm definitely a so wino. Really. Okay, so just a little backstory. I'm the baby in the family, you know, went to school, did the school thing. Okay. When I was in school, um, I started bartending. Mm -hmm. Then as soon as I graduated, my grandma died. And it kind of put a halt on me. And like financially, like that was my rock. So I got scared and I postponed my law school plan. So three years later, well, let me just backtrack a little bit. After she died, I was like, fuck it. And I started dancing. Tasha, I lived my motherfucking life for like three years. I ran up a check. <laughs> I ran up. The, I mean, I, I dated niggas that flew me out. I'm a little baby from South Carolina. I ain't never seen nothing like this. I have lived my life. <laughs> now to say that I was smart about my money. I pay my bill. I this ain't shit to brag about, but go ahead. <laughs> I invested in. I invested in the hair company. I have a great hair company. Um, and I paid my way through school. So I've always been smart with my money because it's just me, you know. Okay. Now, now that I took some steps to take my LSAT, passed that. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I was really scared. Um, I took two classes for my master's. Um, I have a 4.0 right now. Okay. Um, I haven't been dancing in about seven months. I'm going back. But right now, I'm not dancing because my hair company is actually like doing numbers right now. So I was like, okay, let me put some energy into this because I'll be dancing all night, come to the shop, be doing hair. I'm tired. You know, I will have a lot of money, but I will be tired. I'm burnt out. So I want to keep my business here in South Carolina because it is profitable, but I'm ready to move because I'm going to have to move for law school anyway, but I'm scared. Where are you moving to? So I have two choices. Houston, or Detroit. 
So you not you not afraid to go fly out with random niggas, but you you afraid to uh-uh, move? Uh uh-uh, uh, not random. I have you about four little good sugar daddies. We are gonna bless the men that You're were very generous. You're not afraid <laughs> to fly <laughs> out to see random men for a check that you met in a strip club. Amen. But you afraid to move your business to where yes, it needs because to I make be a... so we can thrive. Yes, because I make a lot of money in South Carolina, so I'm scared of change. I ain't gonna lie. I'm scared of change because I'm doing so well here, Bullshit. so I've created like... A... Bullshit. Cap. What? What's wrong? Cap. Okay, you Cap. tell me. You I'm, I'm open to listen. Change. You are not scared of change. I am. You scared because... of failure. Yes, that too. Amen. It I agree. You scared of change because, sweetie, you done went from how do you go to law school to go dancing? That is change. And you in a small town. So everybody uh-huh. knows you dancing. Uh-huh. Now, do I, now, listen, listen, listen. Do, listen, listen, listen. Do I care? No. But do they know? Care. No, do I care. don't. Because do. everybody didn't have my situation. I'm in a situation where I had to fund my whole life by myself. I ain't got nobody to call on. I ain't got nobody to, like, you gotta understand, you gotta look at people's situation. I'm not in here fucking these niggas. Like, girls go to the club and have the mentality of, oh, I want a boyfriend. I want to fuck on this nigga. You can have a rich nigga. That don't mean he's going to be financially there for you all the way like he wants to. you really just a little prop. So it's there to have fun. It's a temporary situation. And I'm very aware of that. I use my situation to get where I need. I have a degree. I'm going to get more education. All this takes money. I just can't up and leave and not have no money. I don't have nobody. You know what I'm saying? It's a constant it's of or income that I've been well, used to. Well, you know? luckily about stripping, you can strip anywhere you want to. And you can see your sugar daddies in any state. And Houston has yeah. a thriving market. What's the other oh. market? You said what? What's the other market? Detroit. The fuck you want to go to Detroit for? Girl, I ain't going to lie. I have two college buddies that I graduated with, right? One is in the tech industry, and the other one, she's a paralegal. And when I say they have had so many opportunities, so much growth in yeah, the past two years. Yeah, ain't nothing here. It ain't nothing. You know what? You may need that slow life. You know what? Detroit may be on the You list. know what I'm saying? That's what yeah, I'm saying. Do I need a little change? Good... I mean, you from the South. I don't think you're going to be able to take that cold too much longer. Though. Detroit oh, no. is a different I hate, type of cold. I hate that shit. I went one time during the cold. But I'm just very aware. I'm just like... You know, all them situations where you fly out with a nigga, that's temporary. Moving to another state to yeah. start a new life, that's permanent. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm scared of but failure. What I, want, though, what I want, though, is for you to figure out what you really want to do and why it is that you're going to law school and why it is that you have a hair company that's thriving. It took because... a long time for that shit to pop, too. This is I like the it. first I year. It. Yeah, it took a I long get... time. I... I get that. But here's the thing. You still have to think long term. So if you do right. ultimately become a lawyer and they find out your past, who's going to take you serious? You're going to run into that. You know, I thought about that whenever mm-hmm. I, my first night before I even put my shoes on. I prayed about it. And it was kind of one of the situations where do I do what I have to do to pay my bill for tuition or do I leave school? You know what I'm saying? Tuition is due tomorrow. They're going to cut your classes off on Tuesday. What you going to do? So I, I, mean, I, I understand that like you did what you had to do but now you don't have to do it right so why don't you just do this how many more years do you have before you leave i'm in my before lap you, you said how many years before do I have you graduate before, before you graduate i graduated my first degree already so now it's just the last three girl the last little three years okay so go ahead and do the last three years Get that law degree and then figure out what you want to do do you want to focus on the company and just be a lawyer for your company and, and start other companies because you could ultimately right. use your law degree to do that. Or do you just want to be a lawyer full time and work for other people? Yeah, I'm just at a crossroads. But I don't think I know. you need to move right now at all. You don't? Oh. No, no. Only because I, the only reason why I say now is because like the last six months when I stopped, I had saved the X amount of money. And now since the last seven. But if something is working, Hold on one second. It's cool. You fine. Um, if something yeah. is not broken, uh-huh. why do you want to fix, fix it? it? Right? 
So you're going to probably find yourself in a harder financial situation, get into a new city trying to set up and you don't gotcha. know people. You yeah. need to stay where you at. And guess what? Go visit Houston. Go stay there for a little while. You right. know, go stay in Detroit for a little while. All right. you really need is a week or two and it'll tell you right now whether or not you feel, feel you should be here. That's true. Yeah, I'm just at a crossroads and I'm just okay. never... I've had always had my grandma to be like, grandma, what you think? Like, but your but, grandma is with you. So you just have to sit down and she was talking to you the night that you put on them damn shoes. You just ain't want to listen to her. But it's grandma, I ain't gonna lie. Granny been blessing me in the strip club. I pray to her and she be protecting me. I ain't never been in no fight. I ain't never had nobody try to jump on me. He, she be with me, standing beside me with all that money. She be the reason why. Okay. So listen, let's hope she stay there because she may she may decide to pull the plug and be like, let me teach this bitch a lesson and make her no, she no, 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 kick her ass her law school no, full no, time and no, leave these people down in the valley alone. Because some people no, ain't got no. shit to lose, girl. I know that's what I'd be scared of. I'd be talking to this other girl. She's like, she's one of my friends. She graduated high school early, everything. She's smart as fuck. She should not be in the club. But I'd be telling her, why are you arguing with these girls? You're not them. You gotta keep your mind straight. You see all this money on the floor? Use that to invest in yourself. Right. So it sounds like you have the answer, but stay your ass put until you finish with law school. I Okay. And then to figure out where you want to go and just visit the two cities. But I I think Houston would be your choice. Okay. You don't follow a paralegal and a tech guy and try to be a lawyer in a broke ass city like Detroit. They ain't got it. (laughs) Thank you. All right. Bye, mama. All right. Up next, Linda. Linda, hey, where you calling from? I love you. Love you too, baby. Where you calling from? Um, Indiana. Okay, shout out to Indiana. And are, do you have a relationship-based question? Career, um, career I'm based. Issues I'm having issues with. You having issues with who? My two girl, my son and my daughter. Go ahead, shoot. And they basically trying to run my life and tell me what to do. And when I try to get them advice, they don't want to listen. And I've been here 54 years. Birthday was just December the 1st. Now, why would they be trying to run your life? Because like your situation, like you said with your mom, my daughter thinks she's smarter than me. She's 24. And she thinks she can run my life and the whole family life, my brother, my son, and my life because she has the money. You taking money from her? $50, $50, and she's throwing that in my face. Do you need it? At that moment, yes, I did. It's something you ain't telling me, Miss Linda. What you mean? It's very vague. Like, I just don't understand how your kids will feel that they can run your life. It's just over giving you, like, $50. Like, what, what type of relationship do you have? It's been long I, if I talk to your kids... If I talk to your kids, what would they tell me about you? That I hold grudges, and I do, because I did my best for my children. They never wanted for nothing. And now that they grown and they're living a life, I can't control what they do. They're 24 and 33. And I try my best to stay out of a relationship. But if you're calling me crying that your other partners cause you harm, I'm a parent. I'm going to speak my mind. I'm going to see what I see. And if you don't want to hear from me, why you call me? Why you crying? But then you want to try to flip it on me that I'm the bad energy and I bring bad things. But I'm seeing you as a parent. I'm not seeing you as your friend. I'm never going to be your friend. I'm going to be a parent first. And if but, I see something. But even though those are your kids, they're adults. Exactly. Yeah. You can't treat them like they're kids in adult situations. I understand that. So if they're calling you about having relationship issues, you have to approach that like an adult, not like a parent. It's not time to beat them down when they need your advice on how to raise up. And I think it's amazing that your kids are able to call you and tell you things like that. But why are you holding grudges against your kids? Like, those are your children. There's no reason to hold a grudge against your kids when they're calling you, asking which way they should go in life. They're giving you money. 
And then they probably throw it in your face when you turn around and talk shit about them. And they talk stuff about me too. I was taught, called an unfit parent because I wouldn't leave my mama in Chicago that she was not able to walk. And I had to stay there and sacrifice for my mom. My mom died in my arms. And my kid, okay. my daughter especially, said it's my fault we're here in Indiana, but she's house two degrees, financially well off, but it's my fault because her life is like it is. No, you make your life as you want. I parent you the best I could. She never wanted for none. She went to the best top school here in Indiana. She never wanted for nothing. And then she's but just she, entitled. Is she going to go through her shit? And guess well, what? Why, you why raised do, your, Well, why treat your mother like that when I done did all I could for She don't know no better. She's stupid. And entitled. When you got that much going on in your life, but this part is what's, what's keeping you from being successful, but you've been successful in every area of your life. You're just somebody that she's using. It's kind of like you're an innocent casualty. It's like running into somebody in traffic and they having a bad day. You just happen to be their target. And because you're the closest person to her, she's going to put that all on you because she sees herself in you. You are a reflection of her. Yes. But you can't beat her down. You just got to ignore her. I I do. I have, I have to take my absent pill. I have to stay distance from her to re replenish myself so I can handle what's going to come before me. Right. And that's okay. Deal with her on Sundays only. <laughs> All that's right. your baby. I ain't finna tell you to not have yeah, a relationship with her. Yeah, she is my baby. Yeah, she is. Yeah, now what's up with your son? Just don't want to listen. You know, he cried, calls and cried to me. But you living a life, you living a better life than you was as a teen. But you still want to come at me like you want my advice. But then when I give the advice, you's like I'm attacking you. So but both you, of you are saying the same thing about you. Yeah, yeah. It's like they double teen on me. I can tell then. And if they that far apart in age, it may you may have something, Miss Linda, about you saying that you just may need to tweak a little bit with dealing with your adult kids. I agree. You know what that is? No, tell me. You too blunt. I, I'm sorry. That's all. All my life, I've been like that. I know I'm the same way. Me, I'm the same. Way. I get the same thing, Miss Linda. So where I'm from, I'm from the west side of Chicago. That's how I had to do to survive. I get it, but these your children. I You're not talking to no gangsters. You're not talking to no know. kids. No niggas on the street. These your kids. I know. They gonna it's wipe your ass. ass they, the same way you was up there taking care of your mama, they're gonna be taking care of you. I hope not. They are. They're gonna take care of you. I don't know. <laughs> they are, Miss Linda. That's that's what it's for. That's why we have the relationships that we have with our kids. So if they both saying the same thing about you, your tongue, you gotta sometimes everybody can't take that. I apologize to Winos here. I had to take down a show a couple weeks ago because I was too harsh. You got to know, like, okay, yes, you may be always right. That's why they call you, Miss Linda. But you don't want to make it to where it's hard for them to walk through the door when you open it. You don't want to close that door to your children. These are your kids, your children. And sometimes they just want mama to listen. They don't want you to say shit. They just want you to listen. Maybe I think see. about it and come back. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Tasha. No problem, Ms. Linda. Thank you. We're going to take one more before we go to the questions and go to break real quick, okay? Remember, this is happy hour. Please call in only with civilian questions, meaning you're going through something. No YouTube, no influencer questions and things like that. If you want YouTube and influencer questions, follow us on Stash, S-T-A-S-H, okay? On Facebook, we can answer all the YouTube, influencer, career, entrepreneurial questions there, okay? Linda, come on up. Oh, sorry, sorry, Miss Linda already got got down. Okay, uh, Bester. Yes. How you doing, Miss Bester? Where you calling I'm doing from? Atlanta. Shout out to ATL. Now you got a relationship based question or yes. a situation? Okay, what's your question? Go ahead. I ain't had no line in a minute. Trish. Okay, but I I've been watching you since when you first started. But my question is, I've been married. For 35 years. Congratulations. And, and my kids are grown now. But me and my okay. husband just bought a smaller house to downsize. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to turn the garage into a man cave. Mm -hmm. 
So I have a nonprofit organization. I have a lot of events at Mercedes Benz and State Farm. So I'm tired sometimes. But he went and threw all of my stuff away out of the garage. Because he was saying, I told you to go get your stuff, get what you wanted. But I had been working so much, I didn't have time. And I've been so mad at him. I haven't been wanting to look at him, sleep in the same bed with him. I just, it hurt me so well, bad. what did it throw away? Some of my grandmother's stuff. My grandmother raised me. And I had a lot of ornaments and stuff that she had in her house in boxes. Because we recently just moved here. He about threw it in the trash or did he give it away? No, he threw all this stuff in the trash. And I went to the trash where he threw some of the stuff and I was able to find some things. But I've just been so mad at him. I just haven't been wanting to have be near him, talk to him. He's been trying to talk to me and I just feel a certain kind of way. I don't want to have sex with him or anything. And I'm just like, I don't know if I am. Am I taking this too far? It's hard. It's hard, bro. Your grandmama stuff? Yes. It's gone. All of it's gone, and I can't. I couldn't find any of those boxes. Um, some of my winter clothing were in. Um, like had I had hampers down there. And were you able to salvage some of the grandmother's belongings? No, I couldn't find it. Okay. Um, you do realize this is just a man thing. Really, I don't think he did it intentionally to piss you off. The fact know. that y'all just... still having sex and he wants a pussy 35 years later and y'all still sleep in the bed because you know most people start sleeping in separate beds. Yeah, we still sleep in the same bed and we be right. very active with sex. But mm -hmm. I haven't had sex with him since Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving? That nigga yeah. losing his mind. <laughs> he is. He is. I mean, I, I don't have any feelings for him. It's like, it hurt me so. I was so hurt. I cried. Did he apologize? No, he has not. He oh. like it was nothing. Oh. So I, I don't know what to do. I'm like, I don't want to think. Has he always been the type of husband to never apologize for shit? Yes. Okay, so that's part of his character. So does he apologize through his actions, but he can't just bring himself to say it? Yes. So has he apologized through his actions? Yeah, he's been trying to. He, he tried to talk to me some texts when he's at work. Um, when he come into the house, then I'll go downstairs and he'll he just be looking at me like I'm crazy. But I'm just, my heart was hurting. I'm trying to figure out, am I messing up my marriage? by acting it really, like No, it's just a man thing. You know they stupid. Okay. Let me tell you how stupid they are. Give an example. So mm -hmm. I used to buy really expensive pots, right? So mm -hmm. I found the, the Mexican grocery store where they got them them silver pots and stuff. Yeah. You know? okay. And I used to buy really expensive pots. And every time we moved, because my husband and I moved a lot, instead mm -hmm. of if we had food in the refrigerator and the pots was in the refrigerator, because I hate Tupperware. It's like clutter to me. And once we're done with that food, we stay, we save it for a couple of days. I, you know, I cook again, right? Mm -hmm. People just throw the damn pots away. Because <gasps> oh he didn't want to wash the pots. He does that. He does that mm -hmm. shit. And it's like, so you would just, he's the type, if he gets down to his last boxer, he will go buy new boxers. I heard you say that before because I listen to you every day. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, um, okay, the washing machine is right there. You walk past yeah. it. And I'm like, and so me, I just feel bad. And like, I'm, I'm, I'm slipping as a wife, but I, damn, shit. Boxers? Okay. Don't buy no draws. What the hell? Okay. But he'll go and then I like I'm folding 40 pair of boxers. Oh my gosh. Why do you act like they can use they the washing are. machine? That's how they are. Like he you if he's apologized the way he normally apologizes, just tell him if he fuck with your shit again, he ain't gonna talk to you for three months. Okay. He could have moved I, it into another part of the house. And I bought a shed and he had the audacity to put his lawnmower equipment in the shed that I purchased for myself. And this sounds like a real marriage. Y'all love each other for real. <laughs> <laughs> and I just be so mad. Every time I look at him, I just be frowning. I be like, oh, I just can't stand being by him. I just go downstairs and, and he'll follow me. He'll come downstairs look in the door with his bedroom. Oh. And I'm gonna hear it come out his mouth. Just tell him, listen, 
I just need you to say sorry one time. Okay. Just one time. I need to hear it. Okay. Okay. Thank just you. Just tell him that. But you know they stupid. It's me, Barry. It most definitely is. I, I had was... to go buy new pots all the time. And back money was real tight back then. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, mm. I got to go get another $300 set of pots, non-scratch pots. Okay. You know? Okay. You know, because he knows that I'm, I run a non-profit organization here in mm -hmm. Atlanta, sir. And I, I'm I'm out there in the community trying to help these young girls, and mm -hmm. I get tired. And I was just tired right before Thanksgiving. He was trying to get it ready for Thanksgiving because he bought a pool table. And I am, mm, I'm trying to forgive him. I talk to myself. I like forgive him, Carla. Just go ahead and forgive. And then you already him, forgave him. That's why you calling me. You just needed that extra push. Just forgive him. And say, <laughs> I just need for you to say you sorry. Okay. In the 35 years we've been together, you've never said you sorry. Can you just give me this? So okay. I could process this because it was something sentimental to me. Yeah, it was. It's very that you very cannot good. replace. I get it. Yes, oh, I got two plates from my auntie. They know not to touch them plates in the house. Okay, okay. So just, even I though mean, the plates came from the Dollar Tree, and I could go rebuy them plates. It's her plates that she ate off of. Yeah, in my place, and they know not to touch them damn plates. So if he mm. throw them plates away, he gonna die. Okay, that's how I was feeling. Like I wanted to do something to him. <laughs> but you know, but that's your, but that's your, her 35 years and he's steady trying to talk to you. Go talk to that man. Okay. Life okay. too short. You know that. It is. It is. It's very. So, okay. Thank you. And, I, and I'm, I'm a humanitarian, so I have a good heart. But it, it was broken. I it know. was broken into pieces. But it's I'm going to okay. I'm I'm talk to him tonight when he get home. From talk work. to him. And just say, I just need you to say I'm sorry. That's it. Okay. Thank All right. You. Thank you, Miss Besta. You're welcome. Bye. All right. Bye bye. Okay. Oh, we got a lot of questions that just came in. I actually just got some money too. Hey, PayPal. That's what I'm talking about. I got some money. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Remember, this is happy hour. You guys write in your questions or you can either call in. I see y'all wait backstage. Okay. And so we're going to get to you shortly. We got to go over here and read some questions. From the chat, okay. I'm one with Tosh K at gmail.com. All right, so let me see. Uh, lonely, and I just want to meet a good man. Where are they? Relationship question. Uh, Tasha, I guess she doesn't want to be anonymous. My name is Queenie. I had a traumatic life all my life, and I'm worried maybe this is just what life is going to be for me. I'm 50 years old and I've never been in a real loving relationship with a man before. I have no children. I'm not sexually attracted to women, or I may have been desperate enough to switch teams a long time ago. I have family members who seem to disrespect me because I'm single and childless, even though they are fully aware that I was through very traumatic experiences to include Somebody taking her vagina in the past. I've taken responsibility. Hold on. I've taken, okay. I've taken responsibility and accountability by seeking healing, but I just can't seem to find good men who are abuse, who aren't abusive, disrespectful, or just want to use me for sex, which I ain't giving it up casually. At 50 years old, they doing that? Not for the old men. My heart is broken. I pray I'll have faith. Uh, I'll meet my match one day, but how do I fight this loneliness that hurts so much? You 50, and I don't know what type of 50 you are. I don't know if you like, you know, a young, trendy 50, or if you kind of an old school 50, you know, you already got a plastic um, tablecloth on your kitchen table, and you got the kitchen table uh, sitting in the corner, so only two chairs fit on the table, even though it's supposed to be four chairs. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I'm glad that you said that you you sought healing. I hope that you've gone through therapy. Um, but it sounds like you're kind of asexual, though. And, I mean, that's what it's given. And for you to go that long um, and not connect with anybody, and then when you do connect, you seem to connect with the same type of person. Um, either you did not get the right therapy, or to you may be asexual. Okay. Um, because I say this, it's kind of like 
it's sort of like, you know, t for 10 years of your life, you've been working this particular job. Let's just say you were a secretary. Now you got to learn to be a manager. You got to train to be a manager. You can't be a manager in a manager position having a secretary mind frame. So which means your entire mind has to change and how you interact, the type of men you meet, the type of conversations you have, where you're meeting these men. You know, the things that you're bringing up, because if you're bringing up the trauma, they can kind of easily see that, especially if they have bad intentions, that it may be uh, you may be an easy target. You know, that's how a lot of people end up trafficking women and stuff, because they prey on the vulnerability of them just wanting to be loved and accepted, you know, make them fall in love and then they switch it on them. You have to now get out of the trauma bond mind frame and take yourself from being a victim because this is a victim mind frame. Okay. And to being a survivor and you're now empowered and you're taking your life back and all that stuff that happened to you in the past is the past. And you're here now and you're ready to do things differently. What happened to you was out of your control, but now you're in control, which means you call the shots. But you don't have to be lonely. You just got to be very specific on how you go about seeking men and what to look for in men. So you have to start reading books, not Steve Harvey books, okay? But you have to start reading books on character, character building, you know, doing things that you like to do, you know, like find hobbies. And as you're finding hobbies, like I go bike riding, right? There's bike riding groups out here you know, in Fort Lauderdale and stuff like that. And they ride at night. I'm meeting people down there, you know, riding bikes. You have to put yourself out there, but put yourself out there as a survivor and not a victim because people will start to feel sorry for you. They'll connect with that trauma. You're going to think they're providing a safe space for you only for them to turn around and abuse you and weaponize it against you. Okay. So you got to be careful about that. So it needs another, you need another, another level of therapy added. Okay. To your therapy. So that you can move on. All right. Remember, write in. Okay. We're going to read one more real quick. Then we're going to go back to the video questions. All right. Okay. Happy hour. Hi, Tasha. This one just came in. Okay. So you got lucky because I'm like, I don't feel like going to the past ones, right? But we're going to read the past ones. I promise you. Okay. Hey, Tasha. So my question is should I tell my sister that I slept with her baby father? We're going to get some sound effects. Should I tell my sister that I slept with her baby father? Basically, we always had a sibling rival rivalry. I can't even say the word. Beef. Thanks to my mom and colorism. Don't you bring your mama in this. Don't you do that. Don't you do that. We are both dark skinned, but she's darker than me. There's a lot going on here. Hold on for a second. I'm gonna have to whoop your ass from this. Okay. We're both dark skinned and she's darker than me. I'm a little lighter than you. And she's a little darker than you. This is just, I feel utterly like my vibration just, I grew up feeling like she all, she was always jealous of me and the attention I received because she would always say, you aren't pretty. You're just light skin, which I'm not at all. We frequently argue when we get together in this particular argument, she was calling me all types of hoes. And I said, I will sleep with anybody's man, which is not true. Didn't you just say you fucked your sister's man? Out of all the men in the world, you could have fucked, you fucked your sister's man. And then when your sister call you out because she knows your insecure ass, you want to try to flip it on her and your mama. You're a fucking sociopath. That's what this is. Like, and I know you're in the chat watching. I know you're looking. I'm going to be honest with you right now. The fact that you even got a color line between two dark skinned women. It's like, this the gun line, boss. This the color line. What that? <sighs> Please tell me you plan. I grew up feeling like she was always jealous of me and the attention I received because she would always say, aren't you, you aren't pretty. You just light skin, which I'm not at all. We frequently argue. We get together. Okay. 
All right. She said she was calling me all types of hoes and said I will sleep with anybody's man, which is not true. I've done a few thotty things, but not more than the average person. What's average? I know a few thoughts that ain't never fucked their sisters, man. How about that? I know a few hoes myself that I can call that won't even look at my husband because they have levels to the wholeness. Now, she remind me of Cousin Faith. Cousin Faith, okay? All right, now, anyway, I responded with okay, and you lucky I don't sleep with yours. She replied, cause you couldn't, and he would never. I was like, okay, we'll see. And within the next month, I slept with him three times. I didn't want him for myself. I just wanted to prove that I could, which wasn't a flex at all, but I was young and angry, which led to me being a vindictive person. I was going through a lot at the time and just wanted to hurt her. I'm now married and I've never told my husband this, but with the holidays coming up, we may be around each other. And my question is if I should tell her or should I just forget about it? She's still with the baby daddy, by the way. You a vindictive bitch. So you want to tell her for the holidays? You still ain't told me how your mama was responsible for you being colorist towards your sister and y'all both dark skin. What I think is happening here is that, you know, you have two sisters, right? And they fight. One sister happens to have some underlying issues that no one can grasp. Only a parent should pay attention. And I feel like you've been competing with your sister. That's why you 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 mentioned I'm a little lighter. She said we're, we're both dark skin, but she's darker than me. You're saying that your sister is darker than you. You're trying to put her down and build yourself back up. Just like you're putting yourself up and putting her down by saying I'm married now. But she's still with her baby daddy that I slept with, by the way, three times. And you want to tell her on, on Christmas because you used to be a vindictive bitch. Now, don't fuck around and let your husband turn around and leave your ass this Christmas. Because that karma going to come. Just depends on when you want it. If you want it this holiday, that's okay. If you want it the next holiday, that's okay. You choose when you want that karma. I, I can't co-sign this, Cousin Faith. I can't do this. And there's nothing in this. This is this is normal sister colorism that we all went through. But I, I got light-skinned sisters. I have light-skinned sisters. And I love them. I will beat 10 bitches or more asses about them. I don't think I'm better. They don't think they're better. But I talk about colorism here because remember, colorism was painted as you're supposed to be the better person. But here you are just a tad bit lighter, but your soul is darker than your sister. You jealous. You fucking jealous. And guess what? You're going to eat that shit. I'm on your sister's side. Fuck out of here. All right. Diamond. That email out of here. The fact Hello? that she thought I was gonna co-sign that shit. Talking about colorism. Ain't nobody colorism in this room with you. Yeah. Diamond, I'm sorry, baby. Who she child? OD. Whoever that was, that's crazy. That the fact that she was trying to justify that shit. I blame the mother though. The mother has to be involved in some way. The there's mothers, mother there's fathers, there's everybody. But guess what? We all grew up with colorism. But even we all had brown skin, light skin, white sisters, biracial sisters. Just like me and Hazel, he just sat down. She said she's the only biracial sister out of all her siblings. And they picked on her. And she picked on them. But you, you it's a level to it. It's just sister shit. It's just sister brother shit. But you, you, you an adult taking childhood problems into your adulthood? She calls you a hoe and then you go prove to her that you a hoe? Trying not to prove that you a hoe? Bitch, I hope she whoop your ass this Christmas. I really do. Go ahead, Diamond. Who are you calling from, baby? I'm coming from Orlando. What's your question? Tasha, I'm sad and lonely. <laughs> I got ghosted. What happened? I was dealing with him for like 10 months, right? I thought okay. it was going to be a cute little blended situation going on. 
You got but kids? I got kids. I got three of my own. And he, he got has, kids? He got three of his own. He got one out here that he take care of fully. He's in his teens. And the mother is just like, that. she don't do what she's supposed to do. So he always had to take care of his son. Period. The other two is back home in New York. Okay. With they mothers. It's three baby mothers. I just okay. got two baby daddies, you know. My situation was, okay, I was already single. I suppose he was single, whatever. But we was in for 10 months, and he ghosted me on some audit move out here to get in a relationship. I'm supposed to be just focused on my kids, and you you, you in the way of me taking care of my kids, which I don't see how. It's not like I was taking money from him or anything. Like, I used to always encourage him to talk to the kids and call them, which he doesn't. I'm just keeping it a stack. Like he doesn't. It's always an so issue with the baby brothers. He's not raising the kids, but he is raising the kids. No, he got three. The son okay. lived with him. The oldest one lived with him because his mother is just out of the picture. And the other okay. two little baby, the other two girls, the daughters, is in New York with their mother. You understand? Okay. And so he said that you're getting in the way of him raising his kids. He's getting. I'm yes, yes. I'm getting in the way of him. Would you get? Kids. Would you get it? Did he ask you for your advice on how to? parent his kids and stuff like or were you he never asked but i always like gave my advice because i'm somebody's baby mother too and there i always go. say there you go now you know as a mom nobody can't call you man or woman and try to tell you what to do with your motherfucking children mm -hmm. that's what you did to that man you emasculated him and tried to tell him how to be a daddy and you a woman i i felt like it was the right thing to do because if the baby mothers is coming at him like you're not doing this, you're not doing that, and I see where the error is, yeah, you should be calling more. Yeah, you should send some. You should send money. Yeah, so you sound just like them. Yeah, uh, yeah. So it's still none of your business. Did though. I dodge a bullet or am I wrong? Like, yeah. Like, should I just mind my? You did. Like, you should have mind. You should have minded your business. Yes. But I wanted the best for him. I didn't want him to be looked at as a, a dad. But he didn't want the best for himself. That's why he was running from his baby mamas and shit. And then he ran into another one. And you, you a single baby mother? Yeah, but my baby daddy, he do what he supposed to do. And he saw that. He hate my baby father because of it. He used to be mad that me and my baby daddy is close. Yeah. Because we, really? we do what we supposed to do. He got, we co-parent well. There's no drama. Really? He, so you telling yeah. this man he need to step up, be a better father. You probably comparing him to your baby daddy. I never compared him. him. Nope. You didn't have to. And <laughs> he's right there. He see it for himself, you know? So why you and, why you and the baby daddy ain't together? Because I just wasn't happy no more. I wasn't happy with him no more. So I left him. When did you leave? I left in 2022. It's been over a year now. And he 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 hasn't moved on anything. He just stopped. Like he just wanted me back. But he never like tried to like intrude. Like he was like, You're dealing with this other dude, you know, good luck and everything like that. And we just still co parent. But I never went back because I just I just wasn't happy with him no more. I wanted to, you know, Girl, do that me. That man dodged the bullet because you was going to break his heart. You think so, Tasha? Okay, you, you think so. And then you was already emasculating him, telling him how shit of a daddy was. And, I and your, your baby shit. father is right there. He don't even want to leave. And so this man will have to come in trying to compete with this other man. Men see that. It's, it's, I mean, it's I like, like lions in a pack, girl. It's like, you know, they got the, the lion can see when another lion is trying to move in. Like, he's, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Did they ever meet? Yeah, they might. I introduced <laughs> them to each other. Child, how did that go? They both was just jealous. Like, they both was jealous. At first, they both was giving me a fucking hard time with each, about each other. Like, oh, why are you dealing with him? He lives at home with his parents, and I'm your baby no, daddy. It don't have nothing to do with the kids. He just made up an excuse to tell you why he didn't want to be with you, but it really had to do with him not feeling like he was man enough to be with you because you were still with your baby father. No, I was, I'm not with him no more. I yeah, you were still with him. God, you still you emotionally connected, him. and that man let it be known. So you better ask your baby father what he said to him. He didn't say anything. We was all together whenever, like, whenever. You think that's the only time they talked, though? I believe so. I don't believe my, my um ex would go behind my back and do some foul shit like that and talk to whoever I'm dealing with. He he don't, he don't He's not that type. Like, he literally was just like, you know, you're dealing with the dude. Do, good luck to you. You know what I mean? Like, said, good luck, baby. Good luck. Yeah, he was like, good luck. You left me and you gonna see. That's what he basically said. You left me and you gonna see. Yeah. 
And they What's both Hispanic, saying? and he was just like, "You, I'm telling you, he girl, he Latina. He saw that nigga. He saw him. Latina men are just as crazy as Latina women. They ain't finna sit behind and be like, they gonna catch him when they slipping. He don't have some words with him. He don't have mm -hmm. some words with him. That man ain't finna deal with that. And you got kids with him, so he know he's never gonna be able to compete with that. So he just exited stage love. It ain't had nothing to do. He he ghosted you because he didn't want no extra problems, and it's not worth it." And then also, like, it was around the same time, like, he did ghost me. Like, he was get he lives at home with his parents because remember, he moved from New York. And a where your baby daddy stay, girl? He's in Orlando, too. He never went back to New York because we came out he here. He got together. his own place, yeah. But you around here entertaining a, pa a man that, that, that lives with his parents, yeah, and, and not... doesn't take care of his kids, yeah. Now, Diamond, yeah. Diamond, 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 now you came up in here. And you was giving advice to the last bitch now. It's you always like that. Like I'm still nah, young. Like, you can always see somebody else's bullshit. That's why I'm calling you, and I really respect your your input. I've been I've been a wino since day one. I love that diamond. I yeah. want to keep so you I wino right now. I hope that, and I hope that you stay a wino. But diamond, I am. I don't you care what you tell me. I'm here. Dummy, you making some dummy ass decisions right now. I know. Everybody told me. My mother was like, "Oh, you stupid. You left. You left your baby father. You want to go back with him today?" Because he what? What? He's boring. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, I knew I it. I fucking I knew it. Me. Women always tell me he's boring. You want a boring man. Do you know why? I don't. You're the only thing that entertains them. If you got a man it. that's excited, mm -hmm. there are things around him keeping him excited. Mm -hmm. Why do you think Diddy was always excited? Mm -hmm. I hate sitting up on my own shit. I really do. Like, but then you it go is, and you, the you, you you choosing your baby daddy who got his own place who take care of his kids over a nigga that stay with his mama and don't have a but relationship. He was controlling with me. Yeah, he was because he's a man. He's a protector. He's supposed to protect you from you, and he you, you need him right now. Because you know, you got to bring some it. random around your children, and then and, and, and your other husband. Lester gonna have to kill him if he touches kids because the man he don't know how to like be a that. father. He was actually really, you know, good with the kids. You know what I mean? And I was good with his kids. I feel so bad. His kids are still texting me. Don't know nothing. You know, he's still hitting it me up matter. like Tiff. It don't matter. Them kids ain't got no business being around no other man but they damn daddy. Period. Mm -hmm. Period. And if the man don't have a good relationship with your baby father, that's a problem. What you got to hide? Jesus, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's true. But that's why I can't. Why I can't be around when you're around my kids? Do you trying to do something? It has to be a blended family. That's what I thought so, it was gonna be, but it's, it's like not. He, he got you mad look, how you his look kids at, came on to me. Like his kids was like attached to me. Like I want to go to Tiffany's house every day. Yeah, because you, you know was being I mean? nosy. You was implying you shouldn't have been over there trying to start no family with a man that you just met and you just got out of a relationship. You ain't even been out of a relationship a whole year. And you talking about you don't went from boring to broke. Aww. Diamond. Mm hmm. Take I'm your here. ass back to the motherfucking house and go get your baby daddy because the worst thing. That's going to happen to you is that you get mm -hmm. out here and you see what's in these streets because you're gonna get ghosted a few more times and baby daddy finds somebody here in the chat to pick his ass up and take care mm -hmm. of him. Because my mom, I'm gonna be honest with you, black women are coming for Latina men, just like mm -hmm. Latina women come for oh, black they try. men. Oh, they try. That's they what I'm try, trying to say. And you thinking you got that on lock. Like I'm I'm not healed yet. I don't want to deal with nobody yet. You thinking you got that on lock. You don't. Mm -hmm. You don't. I don't want him though. I don't. You do. No, you just don't want him right now because you just want to say, "Is is this what I'm supposed to be? Is this what I'm supposed to be doing?" Y'all got kids and shit. Y'all work. Y'all ain't got that much time to be having fun and shit. This man trying to protect his family and stuff, and you round here, you want to be in the streets to see what else is out there, bringing more motherfucking problems into the house. Diamond, sit your ass the fuck down. Okay. And you I want a fun relationship, go make it fun. Life. You want a fun relationship, go make it fun. Women plan the weddings. They plan the trips. They plan the, 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 the sex capades. We plan it all. Niggas just lay there and spend money. That's true. But if you it get somebody so that's spending money boring. on you, 
that's it wasn't fly- only boring. It was like the matter of that, like the controlling, because mind you, two different cultures. His fucking father didn't control everything the mother done did. I didn't want to end up like that. Every year she having but a baby. But that's what he knows to protect. It's the most men are controlling. My husband's controlling. He say, "Bitch, go change. I go change." He said, I can't go nowhere. I don't go nowhere. I'm t- I'm serious. Like, it's like that. I let him. I don't let him. He runs mm-hmm. our household. Doors locked at night and morning. Mm-hmm. You know what else could have been an issue, too? It's the fact that, like, honestly, my mother was never married. That's your problem right there. Yeah, too. You don't see other women do it, and you think you can do it by yourself. Like at first, like, oh, don't be your head. You want to Very, leave very leave, but... toxic. And you probably yeah. needed your daddy around. No, no, no. It's a long story with that too. Like, I didn't, didn't really have a relationship with my father until I was dead. And you and just, grown. you just, you just keeping up the generational curse. Yeah, yeah. Take your ass back to Hayes. So it's girl. a good thing I got ghosted then. Like, no. but my sister pick his ass up. Shit, no, you better say with my baby down. Right, I fight. <laughs> you, you better say wait. What you say, Diamond? Don't be coming for my baby father because I fight. Get out of here. Say, look, oh, oh, no, Diamond. No, baby. No, baby. See? See? And you ain't going to want him until somebody else want him. You better stop playing. I'm not playing. I'm dead serious. You are serious. playing because like, you felt. love him. You love him and you shouldn't be doing him like that. You want a fun relationship? Make it fun on your terms. Mm-hmm. But I guarantee you know him like clockwork. If he control it, you can control his time. He probably in the house every night by 8.30. Yeah, boring as shit. Like very, very predictable. You want a man that you can predict. The ones that's unpredictable, you can't find them. He ain't called. Is he in jail? He at the I'm hospital? You, I don't know what happened. He just he stopped responding. Cold. I'm like, what the fuck? Y'all, y'all, I don't know. Y'all new age women, y'all are different. I want me a boring man. I learned that early on. Shake boring as hell. Yep, that's right. No fun. <laughs> Look, I'm telling even the team, right? The team can mm-hmm. go on a trip with Shake. Mm-hmm. They can go on a trip with me. Team have fun, right? Mm-hmm. We working, we filming and stuff. They go on a t- they go on a trip with Shake. They eyes straightforward. He's in there like. No drinking, no talking. Y'all talking too much. Everybody quiet. He's like a drill sergeant. Mm-hmm. And then they come back. First they was favoring him. Then they come back and be like, "Uh, we told you. Jasmine trying mm-hmm. to tell him Tasha and Shaq run the business very different. Tasha's very fun and hype. <laughs> Shaq is very, mm-hmm. we're going to get this shit done. If it take 12 hours, you're going to be on set. No food, no water. Just work it. When you're done, you can relax. But he keep it so he's just like that. He's so predictable. You have to understand, boring is great. There's nothing wrong with boring. And I want to celebrate boring men because they ain't out here making tons of babies, not holding up their responsibility. They out here going to work. They are set in stone. And they want a woman that's going to appreciate their boringness and add a little spunk. Just as I'm I'm, I'm going to end it here. But just yesterday, Shake wanted to go to work. I said, well, you go to work. It's 90 degrees outside. I'm going to the beach. He said, you going to the house. He, li- he literally said it like that. I said, who are you talking to? And that's what he used to do to me. You ain't going to no yeah. beach. You ain't going nowhere. You, know so, so. you know what I did? I went upstairs. He went in the house. Shaq, <laughs> you can work yourself into a heart attack. I'm going on the beach. And you know what he did? He followed my ass because he knew I was going to go. He mm-hmm. followed me onto the beach. I was going to call security. And go to the beach without him. Because that's the thing, too. He don't mm-hmm. want me out there by myself. I get it. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I must still go. He knows that. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing anything wrong. And you know what he said after we went on the beach? He said, baby, thank you for taking me out. Thank you so much. <laughs> I had the best day ever. <laughs> that's how they are. You just got to go. They will follow. Oh, that, no, that's why he's following you. He ain't letting you do nothing else. That's no, why he's saying, go over there. Like right that. Here. I will come home. I will still go. And I will come over and have to fight with him all night like why'd you go and blah 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 see girl just go to sleep give him some head and go to sleep child Uh, okay you know the argument gonna be you know how to stop the argument i don't want to fuck you it got to boy if i'm arguing all day i don't want to but that's what it ultimately boils down to you go out too late he already wondered if you with somebody else your job is supposed to come in and give him some pussy without taking a shower to make sure his woman ain't been with nobody else you know the rules don't play with him like that Okay. I'm going back to I've been to the point where let me tell you, I said sad and lonely, Keisha Cole. I've been sad and lonely. Bye, t- bye I, diamond, I need to work on my somebody shit. finna take his ass. Bye, Diamond. 
I love you. Tosh. Love You're you welcome. I'm going to talk to you soon. Okay, baby. Yeah, Diamond just going to throw away a good man like that. Just he, he he around just, yeah, go around there if you want to. I'll be right here. Okay. All right. Who's up next? Valerie. Hey. Hey, Valerie. How you doing? Girl, hey, girl, hey. I'm good. I'm good, baby. Where you calling from? I'm calling from Tennessee, baby. Shout out to Tennessee. Girl, Valerie, girl. what you want? Valerie, you, you in the rocket chair? Girl, I'm in my, uh, in my, uh, I just bought myself a, uh, what you call these kind of chairs? Uh, lazy <laughs> boy. And it, it massages me. And you, got the, you got the airplane pillow on? Yeah, yeah I'm chilling. I got to tell you my problem. What's going on? Okay, so I got married at an early age. I'm 56, okay? okay. And uh, I usually have all my stuff on. I, I, this is playing me. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when I put the makeup on and put my wig on, I'm cute, okay? All right, so I'm married at 22. I stayed married for 27 years. Okay. In that marriage, uh, the whole entire 27 years, I dealt with uh, my ex-husband drug addiction. His drug addiction was different. He used crack, but he would be clean for like five years. And then he'll fall off the wagon. And then he'll be clean for another five years or six years. And then he would fall off the wagon. But the thing of it is, see, look, we didn't know each other for about three months. And then we married. I, I felt like I married my best friend. When he was good, he was the best, okay? I mean, he was a good provider. He was just, he was a good man. But when he would fall off, it was horrible. Then, okay, I had two kids. My daughter, she's 32. My son, he's 28. Okay, we divorced back in 2017, I want to say. We divorced my so daughter. So let me get off cracking, he doing good. He, girl, yes, girl, got another wife done, bought a brand new house. They gone on the cruise and every damn thing. Oh, excuse me. You watching yes, the pictures come across Facebook? Huh? You watching the pictures of the cruise come come across Facebook? Oh, no, we talk because, see, let me tell you she something. I don't them. know what people think. They think when kids get grown, you're through raising them. That's not true. Because, see, when they turn, just like when my daughter turned 32, she's never been 32 before, but I have. So I still have to pour into her. My son, same way. He ain't never been 28 be before. Okay. So, you know, the daddy have to, you know, you, you'll never stop raising your kids till the uh -huh. day you die. I'm 56. My mama, I still go to my mama. She tell, I, she, I've never been 56 before. She have. So she has to tell me some things. Okay, I want to get to it, but the thing is, cut to the real chase. My daughter, all right, I hit 40, and I don't know what happened to me. I got every D that came my way. Them little boys was after me every which kind of way, and I'm telling you, I laid it wide. I mean, I was out there, okay? I did my thing, and some of my things... You giving up a lot done. of pussy, Miss Valerie? Huh? Yeah, I gave up a whole lot. A lot, whole lot, whole lot, whole lot. Okay. To little boys, to okay. little boys and everything. Look, okay. How little are we talking? Huh? How little are we talking? Oh, uh, some of my daughters, exes, I did. Yeah, sure did. <sighs> and I, but just, I think it was just how many of her exes? Maybe one or two. Valerie. Oh, Tasha, Tasha, wait a minute. Valerie. Girl, that's 40. That's what I was 40. I'm 56 now. I'm sorry. I, I said I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Miss Valerie. What? I did it. I did it. I did it. I did Whoa. it. Whoa. Whoa. Miss Valerie. Hmm. You, you, I thought you said you was going to fuck on your daughter's friends, not boyfriends. Yeah. And yeah. they fucked you back. Yeah. Who pursued who? They pursued me. I never had to go pursue anybody because they always come after. They still come after me. I don't have to. I don't have to pursue. I don't pursue men. And that's why I don't understand. I get on here every Monday and I listen to these women ask you the same question time after time after time again about a man. You give them the same answers. They are not getting it. I don't understand. Now, Miss Valerie, now, Miss Valerie, I got I to tell you, you what You can't be giving nobody advice when you Look, don't, you don't commit the ultimate sin of sin. You I repented before your God. daughter's boyfriend, so daughter, not I friend, Miss Valerie. I... No, 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 
about Miss Valerie. No. Come on now. Come no. on. I repented and I was sorry. You can't repent but that. We, the soul but look, tie look, has look, been made, Miss Valerie. Me and my daughter. Now, she like can't you was bring just her around you. You were just talking to that other young lady and you said that, oh, you go party. She would go party with her kids because she was young, right? Right. Well, that's what happened with me and my daughter. Me and my daughter, we partied together and we had fun. Lots of fun. But you wanted Lots her of type fun. of fun. Huh? What'd you say? You wanted her type of fun. No, I was having my own type of fun. Now, Valerie, we both had the same. Let me ask you something, Miss Valerie. How I haven't even you... got to the problem. No, part. no, no. You got to help me understand something because we're here to learn. Okay. How is it that a man put his dick in your daughter and you take that same dick and put it in you. Because I'm going to tell you how. You be drunk and high and you don't even care. And it's not like I did it time and time again. Was you smoking crack too? No. No. Mm -mm. no. Just, getting, just getting, I mean, just smoking a bunch of weed and drinking. You sure you weren't mixing the weed? Uh uh, no, 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 no. Mm -mm. Okay, no, Miss no, Valerie, I, I, that, that's different. But go, what's your question, Miss Valerie? Hurry up, you. you okay, because no, I'm getting high blood pressure. Tasha, so look now. Okay, now that is not okay. It's okay. I'm trying. I'm problem. trying to be non-judgmental. Uh, this, this is what it is like. I was listening to that young girl. She talking about how she don't like her mama. Okay, now my, my daughter now. Now, during those years that I was with my ex-husband, with him falling off like he did and stuff, uh, uh, we ended up uh, 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 coming up under a, a, a church that they started a church and then he became the pastor. And then we started pastoring this church and, and then he fell off and stuff. And then so the next thing I look up, I'm in the hospital with pulmonary embolisms. Uh, uh, they don't know if I'm gonna live or die. Okay, that's the first incident. After that, okay, my kids were still young. I I, I uprooted them because we lived in a small town. I brought them to the city, and so uh, then I got here, and then uh, he followed me here. He stressed me. The kids stressed me. My daughter got pregnant at 16. Uh, look, I was I went into cardiac arrest five times in one day. And one day, I when I when I first had the the pulmonary embolisms, they made me stop working. I was at the top of my game on my job, but I had to stop working. So I've been disabled, what they disabled since two thousand eight. And so now, okay, let's come to the present. He, you know, he, I was dumb. I married, I married him again. Can you believe that? Mm -mm. I married him again. I can't believe that. I married him again. I mean, I can't believe it. I can't it was not five years before he used. It was two days. No, it was the day. It was the wedding day. Yeah. It was wedding day. So he smoked the crack second right time. after he got... the, Yep. The second, the, the second time I married him, um, uh, the wedding night, he fuck, fucked me and he left me. Crackhead and I didn't see him no more for two, about two or three days. What is it about crackhead dicks? Because like, they wives stay around forever. Look at Samuel. It wasn't even about to be with me with him because when I was young, when we were young and stuff, yeah, the dick was good. But then as we became older, you know, you don't you don't fuck me the same way you fucked me like when we was when I was 22. I mean, you ought to be you ought to be grown with it. You know, you got to be grown with it. When you grown with it, you ought to know how to use it. So it wasn't that. It's just because it, we were just really good friends and we made we we were good together. What's your but question? Not, What's your question, Miss Valerie? My question is my daughter. My daughter and I. Let I me guess. Her. She ain't fucking with you. No, yeah, she she fucking with me because see, I've had her baby ever since the baby was born. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, she she ain't never been uh in a position to mother the child. If out of her fourteen years, I say my daughter maybe have had her daughter maybe a year and a half. Okay. Otherwise, I've had her. Okay. okay. Uh, with so you no, got the, you got her man and the kids. 
No, he ain't the one. He ain't the baby daddy. No, I'm saying you had her men and her kids. No, he wasn't never her. You're not getting what I'm saying, Miss Valerie. I do. Well, I know. I do know what you're saying, and I'm trying to really think. Okay, so what's oh, the oh, question? Okay, Valerie? okay. This is what it was. Okay, this is what it was. Okay, it was um, it was our our our, our weed dude. Okay, that's who she messed with. Who? It, it was our weed dude. Okay, and so that's the one that I that nigga I putting did. something else in the weed. That's the one that I I I did. Just him, just him. You know they that's... just had a study and came out that said weed giving people heart attacks and shit. Really, I and believe strokes. it. Uh huh, uh huh. Because see, I tried to smoke some the other day, and honey, I was so paranoid, I almost fell into the Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, I ain't lying. Girl, I almost fell into Christmas tree. Girl, because I don't smoke in my house. I, I, thought that, I tried to hit it outside. And girl, I hit that thing. And you know, I'm old school, so I roll joints. I hit that thing, girl. And I was so paranoid. God tried to get in the house, honey. I you know you can't be having no heart fluttering with pork Girl, uh-uh, honey. I don't mess with that stuff. No, ma'am. Uh-uh, uh-uh. I'll never smoke again. No, uh-uh. I can't yeah, do it. Yeah, okay. No, I believe it. Listen, uh, so anyway, uh, last December... Uh, I'm an only child. Uh, I went and my mama got sick. And so I was like, mama, I said, you know, because where she live is a small town. I live here and 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 I have great uh, a great team of doctors here. So um, now I've had pulmonary embolisms three times. You told me, you told me. I'm just three trying times. to get to the question, okay, Ms. Valerie. Okay, okay. On, on, on uh, what, I don't know, January. Uh, my daughter, we all got this place together. Me, mama, my granddaughter, and my daughter. Okay. We got three stories. Everybody got their own room, their own space and everything. My daughter bought a nigga into the house. Okay. And, um, I mean, I'm right across the hall, and my granddaughter right next to, door to her. Now, uh, she knew we wasn't playing no games like that because we walk around we in our underwear. We don't, you know, we girls. It's a house of women. You know what I'm okay. saying? Okay. okay. So I had been admitted to the hospital. I got out the hospital and then uh, I was in my bed. You, you know, they were tending to me. And then my granddaughter came and told me, she said, she called me new news because um, when she was born, I was too young to be called okay. grandmama and I wasn't going to be called grandmama. So she okay. called me news. Okay. All right, so Ms. She, Valerie. Me she said, uh, did you know that he is living here? And I'm like, what? She said, yes. She said, he been living here ever since you've been gone to the hospital. I said, what? You know, and see, okay, yes, she paid bills here. So I made a pact with her. Okay, look, you pay bills here, okay? Look, you have uh, Wednesdays and Sundays off. Okay. On those two days, have company. Okay, I thought that was, she agreed. I said, you have company on those days, the days. Damn, that she off. a child? <laughs> no, but baby, I, I live upstairs too. I'm up here too, in my room right out up here too. I, what, you gonna cut me off? I, I, I can't walk around in my drawers. Because you want a nigga to, to, to lay up in here and eat our food and not pay no rent or nothing? So you said I'm wrong for that? But anyway, I don't care if I was. So I'm like, well, what's the, the question, Miss Valerie? On the door. My do I knocked on the door. I'm like, uh, what's what's going on? Okay, so it was a whole blow up. My daughter ended up telling me that she hate me, and she said that she was gonna take my granddaughter far, far away, and I would never see her again. It that that broke my heart. Okay. Of course, she couldn't do it because I got my granddaughter. I didn't ahead. know you had a heart, Miss Valerie. I do, Tasha. Please <laughs> feel me now. I love my kids. I really do. I really do. And just because I just fucked that one boy, don't be putting me out there like that. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, don't don't judge me for that one little incident. You know that one. Okay. Okay. But anyway, uh, so um, you know, she does things. When she gets a man, when she get when she gets a man, she totally disappears, you know. But then what's the said, man? When she get a man, she disappears. She just she don't Dude, contact she to us. From you. Look, honey, she needs to be in touch with her daughter. 
I, I'm 50, I ain't got no business raising a teenager. You understand me? Yes, ma'am. Just thank God that he, she's a good girl, you know? Mm -hmm. So anyway, you know, she don't give me no money. She don't do nothing. Okay. She living her life, okay? But you know, so it's time to We baby? get into it. Who we get into it. Huh? Who got custody of the baby? She got custody. I mean, I never took her for custody. She never went to the, I mean, the, the, my, my granddaughter's daddy, he is um, working. She's never filed for child support. Nothing. And I, I, I'm I, like, please, you need help. You need financial help. You know? Look, I just had to pick up. I, forget all that. Look. Okay, so, okay, what's, so what's the question? My, my, my question is, okay, this is what happened. So, I, I noticed our relationship and how we are because we get into it. Uh, most of the, most of the time, it's because she be with the wrong type of men and they dog her. And I be knowing it. I know it off track. I be knowing they ain't no. Why good. your pussy can smell them? Mm mm. Because honey, I wouldn't have them. It's like that. Okay. I would not have them. Okay. So anyway, um, my thing is. I found out it came to me, and that girl, she just spoke it. My daughter doesn't like me. She don't. She I, don't I thought like she was me. gonna say something shocking. I really no. did. Oh, you took see Tasha. No, I, I really thought even told you about I really that. thought Miss Valerie you were the one judge me because I, I for I'm one boy. I'm not judging you. I yes, mean, one you, boy. You holding that against me for one boy, one boy, one boy. And and we was both out there doing our thing. Well, I mean, one boy, and they ain't never been set girlfriend and boyfriend. They just was, he just was the weed man. Damn. That's you all. The plug. You fucked the plug. Come yes. On now. Yes. It came to me when that girl got on here just a little while ago and she said, uh, she don't like her mama. I it came to me that my daughter don't like me. Mm -hmm. And I told her. The other day, I said, Mia, I said, I know that you love me. I said, I know that. Can't nobody tell me that you don't okay. love me. What, what, I said, your gonna do? Like, what, what do I you said, want me to, what do you want my advice on, Miss Valerie? I just, I don't, I just want you to tell me. Because you need that. a Yanya. Huh? Yeah. What you say? You need a Yana. What's that? You, your ancestors, your mama, your great grandmama, the grandbaby, you need everybody in one room. I do? Yeah. For what? So y'all can hash this shit out. Y'all gotta leave this with ancestors so you can move on. But like we on good terms now. So what's the question? But every time she gets with a nigga and 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 and, and, and stuff and stuff and stuff, she she leaves and we don't never see her or hear from her. That shit? And I don't get no money. She don't Is help. She on that shit? Uh uh. No. She no. She no. She got a good job. One thing I'm gonna tell you about him, my that the that my ex did do, he instilled a very good work ethnic in my kids. They hold down a job. Okay. They, she's not on that. She I never wanted her to try like, you know, there's functional crackheads now. No, nah, no, nah, my daughter. Mm -mm. Okay, I okay. would know. So you, I, you, what, do you, what do you want me? What do you want? I want to know how on? I could reconnect with my daughter. I want to know because told you. she do not like confrontations. Uh, she don't like to sit down and talk. She don't like to do that. Miss Valerie. Huh? You know I love you. And I love all the oh, wine and and I think the customer is always right. Tell me the truth. But in this situation, you wrong as fuck. Tell me what to do then. Okay. Okay. Miss Valerie, you got a lot of things going on. Don't cry. <laughs> You understand? You holding me against? You holding that no, one thing? No, I'm being honest. Me, but you no, don't realize that I am a very good mother and I'm a I get very it. good grandma. I'm a, I get it. Don't but hold listen, that one thing. But here's the thing. Here's the thing, thing. Miss Valerie. You raised a daughter that you parted with, and you raised your daughter like she was your friend. But that was then she was already 18. You weed I, with your daughter. You got high. You went and party with your child. So what do I do? Okay, I'm wrong. So just tell me. No, what to but do. here's the thing. Here's the thing. There ain't nothing you can do but just be a good grandmother to your granddaughter. 
<laughs> the damage is already done. Okay. Because yes. guess what? She's a friend to her daughter and not a mother. Yeah. You see that? And now yeah. she's using the daughter and trying to weaponize it against you because she knows that's the only thing that will hurt you is taking that baby away. But you know she ain't taking that baby. That so, baby don't like her. Yeah, she love her mama. She love her mama, but she probably don't like her. She probably gonna be she like, I want to go back never, to my she grandma. Said she's not moving away. She said she's not she moving away. She ain't leaving yet, little girl ain't leaving you. No. And guess what? Because your daughter ain't used to raising her, she's gonna give her right back to you. I just wanna just restore my relationship with my daughter. I mean it, but here's the thing you you just have to be open for that miss valerie this was years and years ago. this was years ago i know miss valerie but listen to me you can't control when people want to forgive you or want or want what you want you still got a daughter that's not actively in her own daughter's life so how is she going to actively be a daughter to you okay so what i do nothing pray and when I tell you, Miss Valerie, I thought there was a time that me and Lynette was never going to talk ever again. Anybody in the world could have told you that. The whole family. What'd the you whole do? family. It just happened. I just prayed. I prayed every day. I hated my grandmother. Hated her. Because your, your intentions are good and you're vulnerable, and you know your wrongdoings and your heart is in the right place, I do truly believe that God is going to bring you and your daughter back together. Oh, right. She got to go through her own shit. All right. Okay. Okay? Okay. Go back. But I don't want you getting off here crying because you you know, you got, you done had embolisms and stuff like that, and I don't want you getting stressed out. I'm already stressed out. I know, but you can't be stressed because guess who who gonna take care of that baby if you stressed? Taking care of my my grandbaby and my mama. Right, you got a lot of stress on you. And what are you doing? If, if they need something, they always Valerie. come to me. They Ms. don't Valerie. go to their daddy, but they come to me and mama. I need three hundred dollars for this. I need three hundred dollars for that. You know, always banking me and my mama out of money, but they don't go to their daddy. You know, I know, Miss Valerie. When, when do you take time for yourself? Um. Mm, you don't no when Why i go to bed um, i got two hours no i got about an hour and i gotta go get my granddaughter she's a cheerleader they're having a game at night i mean okay. it's always something she's on the go she's doing stuff you know but you're gonna have to integrate with her schedule too you gotta take time for yourself i don't have it and you I do. wouldn't even know yeah. what to do if I had you gonna get on. You're going to get on YouTube University and you're going to figure out first how to eat right, how to change your diet. It's going to help to calm you down. It's going to help to open your arteries back up. It's going to help to calm your blood pressure. It's going to help to bring your sugar down, your cholesterol down. You're going to learn how to eat right and be a vegan so you can extend your life so that when your daughter does come around, you're going to be in a healthy state to receive her. Okay. Cause you can't let all this stress take you. You gonna find you a senior citizens yoga course. So while your your granddaughter's at cheerleading, I finally uh, last yes. year was able to hold a, to get a job. And okay, since 2008. I have not been able to work, but now I'm working Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Okay, and, and so the, while your while your granddaughter life. is at cheerleading, you need to be at a Planet Fitness or at a yoga studio doing ten dollar yoga. Okay. I'm already I'm a member of the Y. So. Okay. So you know they got all them courses and stuff that you can take, all them classes. So and when she, when when she is daytime. doing something, you need to be doing something for you so that you can mentally and physically and spiritually be there for your family. Because right now, all this stress, all this chaos, all of this old shit, it's not solving nothing. It's just chaos. It's like you're on a tour of fucking NATO and you, you can't see out. That's me. 
Yeah, you can't be like that. That's why I can see you're very high strong. Please don't smoke no more weed. Please. Oh, I'm not. You high strong. You can't do that shit. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, okay. I'm a wino. Good. For real. Wine is good. Wine is good. Not I'm telling you, I sit here in this chair. I bought this, I bought this chair in my room. That's the number okay. of my room. But listen, I, I but you should have been at the YMCA with why your daughter, your granddaughter was at Tilly there doing a course, exercising, getting that blood flowing, opening up your arteries, lowering your stress, your cortisol levels. Okay. Because it extends your life. Y'all right. gonna make me do a show on telomeres. Uh, how stress and everything that we got going on shortens our telomeres and that's why doctors can tell and life insurance companies and stuff can tell how long we're going to live. Yeah. You know they got tests where they can tell you how long you're going to live if you okay. don't get hit by a train or a bus or something. I don't even want to know. Yeah, but you need to know. That way you can work on extending it because you can lengthen your telomeres, which means they can be shortened, but you can also lengthen them and extend your life. That's the power of knowing. Well, who wants to extend a life like this? Who? You want a die, Miss Valerie? I, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that because I need somebody to be at my door trying to take me somewhere or something. But I'm not going to say that, but I'm just saying, I, I, who wants to extend a life such as this? This is my life. This chair and running my granddaughter everywhere and my mama, she act like she can't do nothing. That's I why in between what do you're doing is do what you got to do right now, Miss Valerie. <laughs> Stressing about it, complaining about it. People complain, got, got problems just like you. I got problems too. Right. Millions of dollars worth of problems, more than four million, okay? And guess what? I still get my ass up here every day. I still take my ass to the gym. I still eat right. I, I still take care of my kids while my daughter talking shit to me. Missing the hell oh, out really? of my son. Yeah, my Your daughter, daughter talking shit. She talking shit. Yeah, like I'm going through that. Like I go through real shit. I Man, just started to just pop my right ass. in the moment, what do you do when when Man, I when, go into uh, hood bitch mode? I'll be like, I'll drop you. you too. I, I, jacked, I you. jacked her up. I did. But I, I, I put my hands on her. I almost did. But I'm saying, oh, but, that's when, but that's when you got to say, you know what? I'm going to walk away because this is a person that I love. And I go exercise and I go lift weights and stuff. And I know that this is what she's going through. You got to deal with the monster that you created of a daughter until she sees and gets to the other side and just okay. love her through her shit. The same way you loved your husband through his crack habit. Yeah. You got to love your daughter the same way through her shit. Okay. Okay. All right. Now you get on YouTube. You get your mind right mentally, spiritually, physically. You learn about fasting. You learn about eating plant-based, 80%, great, 20%, not so great. You exercise, go walking in the morning, get involved with your granddaughter doing that school. Go volunteer at the school. Go get some of that love from them kids and stuff. You need that kind of stuff. That's what keeps you going. But don't oh. be running around here talking about you want to die. You don't want to be here. Hell no. Sorry. I said I didn't who won I didn't say that. I don't said say I that didn't shit no more. Don't say that shit no more, Miss Valerie. Okay. I'm, I'm coming back and I'm gonna give you a uh you a sure update. is gonna give me an update after Christmas, okay? And you make sure you cook this holiday and you bring everybody together. Oh, we always do. Okay. All right. I love Thank you, Tasha. I love you. Thank you. All right, bye bye. Y'all gonna kill me. We done ran over time. I'm so sorry, y'all. Listen, please, please. Please show up next Monday. I think I'm going to bring this again. I'm going to have to add a second day on happy hours. It's going to have to happen. We about to change the whole show, but I'm just saying, like, because I think we're going to move happy hour to wine on game. Is that what we're doing? I forgot. Don't get me started. Okay. Don't get me started. That's just one thing, but happy hour has a totally different thing. It's, it's bigger than wine. Okay. But Thank y'all so much for watching, okay? We do got to head over to TashaKLive.com for the celebrity gossip portion of the show. I am definitely over time. Um, we're going to have to figure this out, okay, after the holidays, okay? I love you guys so much. Thank you to everybody that wrote in. I will see you next Monday. Don't forget to head over to TashaKLive.com. We got some awesome interviews right now. We're going to sign off with the trailer. And with that being said, now I got to go. I love y'all. Bye. Are the mistress to Shirley Strawberry's husband, Ernesto. We would talk every day for like five minutes, like every, like a like a breakfast call. I was a friend, and a, just a friend. We just talked about everything, you know what I'm saying? Five minutes a day, whatever, whatever. I was just a friend. Girl, if I found out. I'm sure. As a wife. But you know what? 
If I was, if you was, if speaking I was to my husband, if I was day, fat and busted, would, would they care? Now, there's been calls that have been all over the internet, mm-hmm. okay, that have not only exposed Shirley, the husband, you, and Steve Harvey, and Marjorie Harvey. There's been a lot of these calls circulating. Now, surprising, let me read this article, okay, because I, I just want to read a portion of this art, article. Now, Shirley Strawberry's estranged husband is incarcerated at the Atlanta Fulton County Jail on gun possession, theft, back up, fraud. Hold on. No, I just want to read the okay. article. That's, That's why you're right. here. Okay, That's go why ahead. You're here. <laughs> so, on um, gun possession, theft, fraud, child pornography charges, as per the Jasmine brand. Now, according to Sandra Rose, Williams is serving a 23-month prison sentence. You like. have very intimate phone calls with this woman's husband, and you're claiming that y'all have never slept together, and you only have five minute conversations of him waking up and saying good morning to you. That's Nesto calling. That's Nesto calling you. Uh-huh. Okay, go ahead and answer. An inmate at the Cobb County Adult Detention Facility. To accept this call, press zero. Ernesto, it's Tasha K. How you doing? That's what you're dealing with right now. And I put that shit on every fucking post that I ever had on Instagram. I understand it. I took all that shit, all everything I said, twisted it to make fun. I don't fuck about that shit. They're going to see God come true today. If you speak, I don't give a damn if, if, if uh, Steve don't like you. I don't, they ain't got nothing to do with me. You're here to deliver a motherfucking message. And I want to see you do your motherfucking job. Steve Harvey made her get up and address the things that she spoke with her husband about in terms of his marriage and what's going on with him and Marjorie and her not being at the house and she's never been to his house and, you know, a lot of stuff. And that then- was one phone call that they, when he was just asking her how her day was. And she was just, when a person's in jail, especially mm-hmm. when